Camp Nou means everything. Most of these players are Barcelona fans. Fue increíble, la verdad. It's Ronaldo! He was born to be the phenomenon. In the space of six years, he'd gone from being a raw novice to going in with one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. This is all about the fan zone, and we want everyone at home, don't we, to get involved, scanning that QR code for our UK and US viewers. Get involved. We want to know what you guys are thinking. Here we go, New York, New York. One more sleep until fight night. We're inside the Barclays Center because we are about to make it official. Uh, today, Friday, is weigh-in day. This is the DAZN Boxing Show. We had a great fight for the amateur, no doubt. We need to fight. Hey, we're good fighters. Let's fight. Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th. Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. This makes the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to a night. Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Ryan Garcia. Lightning fast, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one Alice. Live on the zone worldwide, April 20th. You want some real fight? You can fight me. The nature of big fights means fight week's always going to be interesting. Uh, the press conference, interesting. Uh, media workout, very interesting as well. And I expect the weigh-ins today inside the Barclays Center to be very interesting indeed. Uh, the A-team is here as well. Showtime, Sean Porter, Sergio Mora, Chris. What are you laughing, Chris? It is the A-team, Chris. I think I'm in the A-team, yes. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's the A-team, no doubt about it. Um, Sergio, um, incredible fight week so far, build up. It's good to see the fans in as well, which I always think adds to it. Um, this is going to be interesting as well, Wayans. Very interesting because, uh, you know, if you're following Ryan Garcia's uh, social media, he's been a little bit passionate, erratic, confusing, however you want to take it. But we're here. It's a promotion. The Wayans, we're concerned, but if he can make it, we're, we're already here. If he can make it on, on stage, still make weight, still produce, still come out to fight, then all is forgiven. But we have to wait. Indeed. Chris, as I said at the top there, fight weeks and all big fights are interesting, right? So many ups, so many downs, so many lefts and rights, right? This fight week has been the same as any other big fight week. It's It's been interesting, to say the least. Uh, this has been a very different version of Ryan Garcia than we've seen at any point in time during his professional career. A lot of social media activity, a lot of insults. I mean, he has been saying repeatedly, this is his way of selling the fight. This is his way of contributing to the buildup. And there's no question, he has gotten under the skin of Devin Haney during these last couple of months. You go back to just a Tuesday afternoon on top of the Empire State Building, Devin Haney slapped Ryan Garcia when they went nose to nose. That's uncharacteristic. For Devin Haney, you know, he's had some moments there, you know, pushing Lomachenko. That was one thing. But to go and slap Ryan Garcia like that, I, I thought that was a an interesting. That was notable from Devin Haney. So whatever Ryan's doing, I if nothing else, it is certainly getting under the skin of Devin. Uh, Sean, look, you've known both fighters for a long time. You've spoken to both fighters as well. What do you make of the demeanor of both of them? Hey, I, to your point, I think Devin Haney has 
he's stayed stable. He stayed where he usually is. However, he has kind of risen and, and, and shown himself to be a little different at, in small moments than, than we've seen before. But, I mean, there's no secret now that seeing everything that Ryan has displayed, social media, just yesterday, my first time ever seeing it, like, hand-in-hand, one-on-one. I'm not a social media follower, so, I mean, I'm literally bug-eyed watching Ryan and how his, his as we have all said now, antics have been. Uh, I saw it first thing yesterday. It concerns me. Um, I'm a cerebral guy, man. I, I read people well. I'm very concerned with how Ryan's going to operate beyond weigh-in day. I, I, I'm concerned with how he's going to operate on fight night. But on a more positive note, look, the fight is here in the Barclays. It's good to see big fights back in the Big Apple as well. We don't really see fights at the Barclays anymore. It is Madison Square Garden. It is the T-Mobile. It is Saudi Arabia. Good to see a big one here. Yeah, good to see a big one here back in New York. For a number of years, this was a home to some big time fights. You know, you know, Sean. I was, yeah, I'm sorry to cut you <laughs> off. I was gonna say, like, coming here, it's everyone says welcome home to me, yeah. which is crazy, but that's how much boxing. This was we had. PBC home yeah. for a while. Yeah. Did a lot of fights here at the Barclays Center. Sergio, I believe you said your last trip here. <laughs> Remind the audience, how did that end? Uh, knock out of, I mean, uh, knock down round of the year by you, by the way. It which was, but how did the fight with, end? I got knocked out by Dan. There Tico. we go. That, oh, you <laughs> say it like that? I lost the fight. That's all I see. I lost the fight. I wasn't going to go there. It was the round of the year. Let's drop the name stick, and everything. Stick to that. <laughs> he pointed at himself. I had to go there. He pointed at himself. Yeah, but it has been some incredible fights, and we're expecting something a bit different, a bit special here on Saturday as well. Some good undercard fights as well. Sometimes you only look at the main event and you forget some of the undercard fighters that we're very looking forward to seeing. Charles Conwell back in action, Scrappy Ramirez back in action as well. Of those undercard fights, which one stands out for you, Chris? I love the Scrappy Ramirez-David Jimenez fight. I think that is the most competitive fight on this undercard. Scrappy Ramirez is the number one ranked fighter by the WBA for the 115-pound championship. He is next in line for the title that's owned right now by Kaizuta Aoka. Could go over to Japan at some point later this year for that fight. He is taking on a legit top five guy. David Jimenez ranked by the WBA at number five right now. And Jimenez, for people that watched the zone, he recently beat Ricardo Sandoval, who is a good prospect right now in the Golden Boy stable. I give Scrappy a ton of credit for taking this fight. He could have taken a stay busy fight, a showcase fight. This is going to be a fight against the guy that is much more experienced as an amateur and has as much or more experience at the high level as him as a pro. Yeah. Indeed, Bektumir uh, Melikuziev uh, back in action as well. I feel like people still remember him from the Rosado knockout, which is very harsh considering he's had three wins uh, since then. 168 pound division, interesting to say the least. Canelo Alvarez, obviously the main man. How far away is he if he gets a win on Saturday away from the big boys? Uh, you know, it all depends how he wins, uh, but if he can get a knockout, he can come back. He's already showed resilience coming back from the knockout with Rosado. We know that he has the goods. He's an Olympic, so Olympian, so he has that background. He can fight. He can punch, especially with the body. Depends how he wins. With a with a emphatic knockout, I can see him getting a title shot because, one, he's ranked high. Two, he's exciting. And who doesn't love a puncher? Yeah. You're interested about seeing him potentially versus Diego Pacheco. It's one you've been selling. you be a matchmaker again? Yeah, yeah, you're doing it. You're promoting a hat on today. Look, I mean, you've got two guys that are looking for a top five fight. Diego Pacheco, we have seen on DAZN for several years now. He is the goods at 168. Vector Melikuziev, to your point, Ade, has bounced back from that win against Gabe Rosado and is looking like the terror that we thought he was early in his career. Two guys, one from one of my golden boy, one from one of my matchroom, both fighting on the zone. What am I missing here? What am I missing here? He that is a fight in Southern California that would do big business. He was waiting for me to throw that ball to him so he could bat it away. <laughs> that was a, that was a layup. Let's get back to, to Devin Haney, right? This is obviously the champion, 140 pounds. I always find your rankings very interesting where you have Teofimo Lopez, where you have other guys. Where is Devin for you in the 140 pound range? Yeah, it's been a little while. Dude. Devin Haney is my number one guy. He's your number one guy now. Yeah, yeah, man. Okay. I just felt like, you know, he had to beat the guy that being um, Regis Pro Gray did, uh, did that Incredible. wonderfully. Um, and I think that he's on a terror. His, his uh, momentum is at an all time high and it ain't regressing for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I just think that he he's, a, he's clearly the number one guy. Teofimo Lopez has had, he's had his bumps and bruises. And, um, you know, I think he's, he's definitely, he's clearly number two, uh, depending on who, who you're talking to. Um, you know, kind of everybody else just kind of falls in after that point. You know? Yeah, some really good fights for both guys at 140 pounds, even at 147 pounds. I hear a certain Boots Ennis could be around in the building that we'll uh, talk to a bit later. Potentially, who knows, Devin Haney going up to fight him. But Devin Haney, very, very special, isn't he? I mean, we look at guys, 25 years of age, 31 fights, 
31 wins. Again, started in Mexico, has done it the hard way. No Olympic red carpet background falling out for him. He's had to do it himself the hard way. Now, you know what? They call Devin Haney the dream, and he really has a, a dream-like career because not only from his roots, he's been groomed for greatness. He's been groomed for this opportunity. And if you look at his resume, his last six, seven fights, all former champions. He goes to Australia to fight Cambosis back-to-back. -back. Who does that? He goes from, from Linares to Jojo Diaz, on and on. Former champions. The resume is solid, and he passes the test every single time. Even then when he moves up in weight and takes on Regis Progray, who's supposed to be a puncher, shuts him out. This is a, not only a dreamlike career, but he passes the test every single time. This man is a goods. You know, there are some early fighter comparisons between Devin Haney and Floyd Mayweather. Both these guys accomplished a lot in the ring before the age of 25. I think there are business comparisons between Floyd and Devin Haney. How many fighters can you say at the age of 25, have fought major events under four different promoters. Yeah. Matchroom, <laughs> Top Rank, Lou DiBella, and now working with Golden Boy for this fight. I love the business strategy Absolutely. of Devin Haney, not tying himself to one promoter for the long term that keeps him from getting major fights. He has bounced between promoters and done it so he can make the big fights every single time out. All right, it's time to make this official. Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Stella Undercard. Let's throw it to your MC for this one, Mr. Joe Martinez. Well, fine fans, a very good afternoon. Welcome to the Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York. And we're very excited to be out here tomorrow night. It all goes down. Golden Boy, a world championship fight on the line. The title here in New York. Haney versus Garcia. It's all brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. And fight fans, you can get inside the doors at 4.30 here on the East Coast tomorrow. Our first bout will take center ring at 4.35. And then, of course, we'll be live around the world on the zone at 8 p.m. Eastern. Before we bring up our first fighters to the scale, let's welcome a few of our dignitaries on the stage with me right now. Golden Boy President Eric Gomez. Former world champion, boxing hall of famer, the executioner, Bernard Hopkins. And world champion, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. All right, let's bring these fighters up to the stage right now. First up, we will have a four-round lightweight attraction with Marcus Browse and Sugar Cane, Jonathan Canyas. These will be our preliminary bouts before we go live around the world. Again, it is on the zone at 8 p.m. from here inside of Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York. Marcus Bowles will be first on the scale from Roxboro, North Carolina to my left. His eighth professional fight. And Julio Time will be calling out the weights for us. A representative of WBA. I'm a sucker for seeing people Marcus in Bose, shape. Here's Marcus first on the scale. He's in shape. <laughs> For uh, boxers, this is 140 uh, pounds for both. 140. This is the hardest thing for a boxer is making weight, making weight right. You know, that's mm. where the confidence all comes in. Once and his opponent from South Carolina, undefeated Jonathan Canyas. 137.6. And our thanks to Wild Casino, America's most trusted online casino wild card. Let's get wild. Title sponsor of tomorrow night's event here at Barclays Center. Also, only fans where creators earn and ever last the choice of champions and preeminent leader in boxing since 1910. What's it like, sort of? coming out this early for the fights. Obviously, all fighters want to be on big cards and always kind of have this debate. Would you rather be sort of higher up on a card, on a smaller card, or would you rather open a big card? No, you want to be higher up. You know, more people in the stands. But, Marcus you know, whenever Bowles, you're a four- and six-pound fight, fighter, as long as you're on the card, then you're on the right projection. Out of North Carolina, as he takes on the young...
lightweight rising superstar Sugar King Jonathan Cañas at 137.6. Thank you, gentlemen. We will see you at center ring tomorrow night here at Barclays Center. We'll send it over to Ariel Hawani for a couple of words with Jonathan Kanyas. Hello, hello. Yes, thank you very much, Joe. I'm here with uh, Johnny. Johnny Kanyas. Johnny, I know you've had some bad luck with some opponents recently falling through. Do you feel confident that this one's going to go through on Saturday now that everything is official? Oh, yeah, you know, it's official. He's uh, faced off of me. We got the weigh-in done, so expect a good show of fireworks. Yeah. Just expect a great fight. Massive card, massive platform, massive stage. How do you get it done on Saturday? Um, I'm going to go in there, do what I do best. I'm just going to walk him down and uh, use my boxing IQ and get him out of there. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Joe, back to you. Thank you, Ariel and Jonathan. We look forward to seeing you inside the ring tomorrow night. Let's move on to our next fight, ladies and gentlemen. WBA Intercontinental USA Super Middleweight Championship. A lot of words for that title. Christian Olivas of Baja California, Mexico, and Darius Fulgham of Houston, Texas. Darius Fulgham is someone that we're all excited about, right? I mean, he... Chris, I mean, we've covered a lot of his fights, and you know, fight and meetings, you hear from him, he speaks well, he looks well. Last time out, though, pushed for the first time. He was against Lantez Fox, a veteran who was brought in to do exactly that, to push him and show him <laughs> things he hasn't seen before. We do have uh, a I think there's a lot to be learned from that, Sergio, but getting up against a guy that's fought on the world championship we level, going the distance, even if you Saturday leave that night, fight disappointed that you don't get the knockout, evening, you learn a lot of lessons. It's actually the best thing that can there, happen to you when you're knocking everyone they put in front of you, and it's hard to knock out a veteran who's been in there with some big names and big punches, so they don't expect to to, to run over everybody. I think it was a, a great lesson for him, and his nickname says it all. Destined for greatness, a greatness in, in spurts. And Darius Fulgham has a massive supporter in Bernard Hopkins, who is up there on that stage right now. Uh, Hopkins has been high on him. His mentality, his skill set, self-belief, everything that Bernard says made him great, he believes that Darius Fulgham has to make himself great. Yeah, we've spoken to him a few times, as I said, and you asked him about his favorite fighters. And he always references Bernal Hopkins and Andre Ward, two guys that done it the right way, very professional as well. well a cerebral fighter, too, a licensed nurse uh, growing up. His a cut man was actually his roommate, or his uh, college uh, roommate at the nursing school. So he's still got that, uh, that DNA in him. If I remember correctly, I was your guy. It was my guy, fellow Nigerian. Yeah. Yeah. You guys bonded. Yeah. That's what Nigerians do when they see each other. Heavy-handed, <laughs> super middleweight looking to take that strap tomorrow night from the defending champion, Darius Fulgham from Houston, Texas. Undefeated record on the line, the belt on the line. It happens at Barclays Center tomorrow. Get your tickets and join us here in Brooklyn, New York. Is that his son in the middle there with the glasses and the belt? Whoever he is, that little boy has swag. He's got a little swag, right? He's got the belt got strapped the belt, around like that, like Mike Tyson sunglasses, back in the day. The outfit. Better fashion sense than Chris Mannix. Wow. Ew, we're straight there. A little I knew early it. for that. Coming early. A little Big, early for low, that. Our early. events will not be streamed, I do not believe, tomorrow, but you can catch all the live action on DAZN at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Be sure to log on to DAZN and subscribe for all of the fights all year long and, of course, pay-per-view action tomorrow night if you cannot join us here in New York. All right, Ariel, take it away. Star, a big rising star in the world of boxing. You're a very cool guy, but dare I say this little man is a little cooler. Can I ask, who is this guy? This is, this is my nephew, Jace. He's the coolest guy on the planet. Uh, please put the microphone in his face. He has to say a couple words. My man, you are the coolest one in Brooklyn right now. You know that, right? <laughs> now, what do you think about your uncle? Isn't he incredible? Yes. Is he going to win tomorrow? Yes. How's he going to win? I mean, beat him out. Knockout? Yes. Are you the champ? Maybe. <laughs> one day, one day. What's it like to have this opportunity and this moment with him up here? Man, it's a blessing, man. I think a, a big part of my journey is just having my family with me. It means the world to me uh, to go through this ride together. So to have him up here on the stage, I know it's got to be inspiring for him to be in, in Brooklyn, New York, holding a belt. And so 
uh, it's just it's, it's everything for me. Yeah, one day, perhaps in 20 years, he'll be up here weighing in and we'll remember this moment. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to meet you. Good luck to you and the whole team tomorrow. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Joe, back to you. Thank you, Ariel. And fight fans, that fight will also be streamed. It will be on the Golden Boy YouTube channel. All of our preliminary action will be streamed live on the Golden Boy YouTube channel. So turn, tune in at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 on the West Coast. And now our final preliminary bout of the action pack card tomorrow, Vaughn Alexander of St. Louis, Missouri, and world title challenger, Sergei Derevianchenko. And you know if this card is a prelim, the main card is stacked. I was just about to say that, Joe. Vaughn Alexander from St. But Gary Vanchenko to be fighting on a prelim card. I mean, <laughs> and Darius Fulgham. You don't get those kind of guys on prelims. Yeah, this is the contractually obligated comeback fight for Sergei Derevanchenko, who fought Jaime Munguia, gave him a really tough test last year. The fight of the year, according to many publications. This is his, uh, his second fight as part of that Golden Boy contract. And a ma massive fight for Sergey Derevchenko. He's favored against Vaughn Alexander, who's a durable guy, fallen on some hard times as of late. But if Derevchenko can get a win in this fight, he puts himself right back into that world-level position. And, and we've seen Derevchenko not afraid to take on any and all comers. Yeah, he is that boogeyman, or was anyway, at 160 or 168. You mentioned some of those all-comers, Danny Jacobs, Kennedy Golovkin, and yes, it might say L on the column next to his name, but ask those guys if they were in tough fights. I think it's a 100% yes. Every single person that watches the Sergei Dervinchenko fight, we need to appreciate this man. He's, he's, he's just bravery and courage incarnate. I mean, and, he, and he's always right, coming to fight and lays it all on the line. I'm glad he's getting this opportunity. And let me tell you, I, I have scored every one of those fights for Sergei Dervinchenko. I scored the Daniel Jacobs fight for him. I scored the Gennady Golovkin fight for him. I even scored the Jaime Munguia fight for him. This guy has been on the wrong end of some really close scorecards that could have told, could have made his story a lot different. 38 now, though. Obviously, look, looks in incredible shape. Wouldn't know that's a 38-year-old man, but he is 38. A lot of punishment in those fights as well, though. Yeah, a lot of wear and tear, certainly, on Sergei Derevchenko, but fought extremely well against Jaime Munguia. We were talking moments ago about Diego Pacheco and a big opponent for him. That man right there looms as a potential opponent for Diego Pacheco at 168. Yeah, so this is the final fight on the prelims, and again, look, fantastic undercard, fantastic prelims. Darius Fulgham like, looking to make another step in his career, and Darren Vanchenko, as Chris said, they're looking to get in the mix again with the big names. And tell, I'll tell you this, the big names won't want to get in the mix with Darren Vanchenko. It's one of those guys that you don't want to fight if you don't have to fight. I think there's some big names that'll do it. We've got Eddie Hearn standing right beneath us, and I think we can make a Diego Pacheco, Sergey Dervinchenko fight at some point. See, gives oh, us the okay. thumbs up like or, that. Or, or Dervinchenko fight. versus Berlanga. I mean, either one. He likes that one as well, he said. Okay. Stop trying to one-up me. <laughs> Always. <laughs> uh, or Sergio Moore, if you can make Or Sergio Moore, I can make 160. My legs shiver hey, doing that. Eddie Hearn knows Keith Conley doesn't match up his own clients. <laughs> But look at how fit Dervinchenko looks still. I mean, insane, for him insane. to be, you know, uh, he's he's been through so many wars, but he still takes this fight seriously, still disciplined, still making weight, still reliable, and this is the reason promoters still continue bringing on big shows. It is interesting, Sergio, that he's fighting at 168. I thought after his campaign at 160, we might see him try to drop to 154 because he is a smaller guy, even for the 160-pound weight class. He elected to move up, and he's fighting at this weight class now. Bigger weight division, bigger checks. This man is at the he's at the later part of his career, but still making big purses. And so he should. Again, he's given us yeah. a lot. Um, in his kind of short time as a professional boxer, but he's given us a lot in those in those few years. And I still think there's a couple of big more fights for Dovinchenko. who takes on Vaughn Alexander. Remember that is the final fight on the prelims. Let's give you a quick reminder of that prelim card. Um, it kicks off with Shamir Canal versus Pedro uh, Bagaro. Kevin Newman the second versus Eric Robles. That's now a cruiserweight fight, by the way. Uh, Amari Jones versus Armel Mbumbe. Yes, uh, Don't sleep on Amari Jones in that fight. That is an exceptional prospect. Indeed it is. Jonathan Canas will take on Marcus Bowles. Darius Fulgham, who we just saw weigh in with his nephew, takes on Christian Olivas and the main one, Sergei Derevchenko, looking to get in the mix at 168 pounds, takes on Vaughn Alexander.
All right, it's been so much fantastic build-up, so much fantastic coverage of our main event, Devin Haney uh, versus Ryan Garcia. None better than 40 Days. Three episodes available right now on platform, on YouTube. Here's a little snippet for you. He just, he's a kid. He's a kid, dude, that's babied by his dad. That's all he is. You finally got somebody raising your hand saying, I'm real. Ryan is showing that he's a kid. I mean, look at look at his antics. Look at what he's doing. He's all over the place with it. I'm a true professional. I try to be professional in, 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 in everything I do. The world is tuning in. So look, look how much media here. Look how many people are here to, to watch us. They think I'm playing around. I'm not. I'm not playing with him. He's going he gonna to find out in the rain. The world is going to see how great I am, how much better I am, and how the amateurs, things change. It's who became the better pro, and uh, that's what all this is about. Let's now face the fighters. As Devin the Dream Haney and King Ryan Garcia ready for a boxing rarity, their previous clashes and deepening animosity mean little beyond how they might inform the present. What matters now is what always matters most because it's game seven. And this one counts. He thinks it's a boxing match. This is not a boxing match to me. This is a fight. I can't lose. At the end of the day, Ryan Garcia is just another opponent to me. I'm in competition with greatness. This is bigger than Ryan Garcia. Ryan is just in my way. Fant it is fantastic as well, isn't it? As I said, um, those episodes available on platform as well, as well as so much other fantastic content in and around this fight. Beef is one that you guys have got to watch as well, and they're available on YouTube. Um, it's good to see that kind of content behind the scenes. We need to see that as fans. We're lucky to be behind the scenes, but fans don't really get to see fighters until fight night. With stuff like that, you get to see a lot of the build-up, which they miss. Well, that's part of the storytelling. It's about building a star. I mean, Sergio, nobody knows that better than you. You were on a a the series, show. a reality yeah. show that had, what, the finale had 11, 12 million viewers? I right. mean, right. It, that's wow. just a huge part of becoming a star in boxing, not just winning fights at a high level, but connecting with a fan base. Connecting is a word. It's not just fighting because the thing that made the reality show The Contender so popular it wasn't the actual fighting. It was being invested in the fighter, the background, the you know his storytelling, his kids, his wife, his mother in my case, and then the fighting. By that time, you, there's so much emotional, emotional things at stake for the fan that it brings more than just a boxing experience. Yeah, I remember when I started seeing the 24-7s and I thought these were just absolutely sensational and this is that for these younger fighters ryan and devon would have watched 24 sevens they would have watched all those kind of stuff behind the scenes they're there now they're in it right their stories are being told in front of us is that good or bad sometimes it's fantastic yeah you know it's, i mean you said it you, you get people invested you get people interested in who I say you that, some fighters just want to fight some fighters don't like the extra stuff, which is so important, but they don't like it. Because they don't understand it. You know what I mean? Like, Sergio, you probably was at the end of your career. You started understanding and loving being at fighter meetings and all these other things that you have to do. As a fighter, you have to sell a fight. You have to get people interested in why they should watch the fight. When you get someone interested in who you are, that makes them want to see you fight even more. And I think that that's why it's important to have these, these shows that you guys are doing. It's fabulous. I, I've always loved it myself. A lot of fighters don't like the media. I get it. But you got to understand that this is not only a way to get people to watch you fight. When they get invested in you, guess what? You got you got a lifer. You got somebody who's going to follow you beyond what you do. All those people over there right now can't wait to get a picture with me because they got an opportunity to <laughs> see me outside of the ring. You know? Indeed. You know what they do, those shows, though? They always make me change my pick. I go in with a rock solid pick and I watch those shows and they're so wonderfully edited. I'm like, one second, <laughs> that guy's not training, that guy's not doing the runs. I always change my pick during it. And if you, have, if you wanted a reason why it's so important to connect that way, the most successful boxer in terms of business in boxing history is Floyd Mayweather. And 24-7 was an HBO vehicle, but Floyd Mayweather made 24-7. Floyd right. Mayweather and his willingness to open up behind the scenes, to put people behind the curtain, help make him into a pay-per-view star. So if you want to be a pay-per-view star, like Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia are both seeking to be both on Saturday night and moving forward, you got to contribute to be part of those types of shows. Yeah, I, I said there's been so many fantastic pieces done in the lead up to this. You guys just saw a snippet of 40 Days. Here's another one. This is a snippet of Beef. Beef. 
Uh, Not that kind of beef. This kind of beef. It's so easy there, man. Right. 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 You may have noticed that at his own, we like a good stare down. Whatever the fight, whatever the country, we love looking at people looking at each other. Oh, look at this one. No. <laughs> and that's a real stare down. Sometimes the staring can get intense. Oh, there we go. Whoa. That's when the old beef comes out. And in the latest all-new 2024 installment of Beef, we have two intriguing main characters. Hey, I'm Ryan Garcia, and this is Disney Channel. And you're watching, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Yeah. Ryan Garcia, he's playing the part of the contender. Somebody with charisma, somebody who has looks. Ryan's coming up against the champ, Devin Haney. I'm taking you down, Ryan. And with some help from ring card girls, a throne, and yes, a real life horse. Our two young bulls squared off for their very own stare down. And of course, there was beef. Like most beef, there is history here. But this beef is very rare. Ryan and Devin have known each other for most of their lives. Both these guys came up in the amateur ranks. They first shared an amateur ring when they were nine or 10 years old. We fought each other at every major tournament. You know, he won the early fights. I won the later fights. So tell me, were you friends back then? Yeah, we were friends a little bit. In February of 2020, Devin Haney, who had a belt at the time, climbed in the ring. They had some good-natured trash talk between each other. You never at any point in time thought that Devin and Ryan didn't like each other. I mean, I think Ryan is good for boxing. Um, he brings entertainment to the sport. I'm proud of him. I've known him since I was young, so to see him where he's at, you know, respect. So how did it get from that to this? You're not my friend. Remember that. You're not my friend. Your dad's a pimp and he pimping you. Well, the answer is this face-off. And a supporting cast of characters that love stirring the pot. Hi, I'm Bill Haney, Devin Haney's father, the best fighter in the world. And you might know me from the internet. Ah, Bill. Father, promoter, trainer. And in 2024, a wind-up merchant. Bill was so upset at that face-off, he took his grievances online. Team Garcia, I don't know what got into you the last time I saw you, but you better tell that muscle-head, meathead, fresh on the scene, Barracuda, looking... Pops started name-calling. His name's not... Barracuda, it's Gaines. Put some respect on his name. That was Gaines after being called Barracuda. Is he okay? No, he's not. He's going through a lot of stress. He's really hurt by that. He put his filthy paws on one of ours, and I had to call in Tank. I didn't want to do it. It's something that you don't do unless it's special. Is this real or not? Because the Barracuda, is he wasting his time? Sometimes it's fighter versus fighter. Hey, Gaines, I think you're but this time, it's camp versus camp. All this chaos from a tiny bit of name calling. That and all the other talk. Ryan Garcia has now endorsed a new product. Shea butter. Shea butter. Shea butter is a good lotion. I use the lotion. Ryan Garcia obviously uses the lotion. It's news to me that you can put it in your hair. Gun. I could fix it more, but like, and then I just add texture spray. Shea butter don't go in your hair, Ryan. What are you doing? Bill Haney is an entertainer. His vice, I guess, is going on Instagram and poking the bear. What is that? 
thing you roll in. I didn't see you roll it on your face. And I think that Bill is a marketing genius. What he's doing is, is just hilarious. We're in this wild story of boxing. And the bigger the characters, the bigger the promotion, the better the narrative, and the bigger the fight. Bill's strategy? Wind up the guy who was popular on social media. Ah! Rather drink Coca-Cola than prom. Do you plan out your social media strategy? I wait for him to tweet and delete, and I show up, and you know what happens from there. Do you think Devin should do the talking and not Bill? Yes, of course. Dude, you're a grown man. It's time you start acting like one. Ryan Garcia is a is a TikToker, a YouTuber. He's an actor. We've seen him in you know commercials, you know doing skits and stuff like that. You know what they say about you? They say you're an actor. Yeah, damn right. I know. I act my ass off. You want to see me improv right now? I'm a f actor. Give me a scene. All right, I got it. Bill, it's Devin. He's not waking up. Bill, I'm serious. Let's, let's scratch out the boxing balls. He's not waking up. F you. And see. See, I'm an actor. He's right. So after months of buildup, one of boxing's strangest ever beefs gets settled in the ring. This drama is different because you have to kind of figure out what's real and what's not. The dissolution of their friendship has come on rather quickly. All I know is that for right now, it's real. Like, they do not like each other. And given that the trash talk has covered everything from horses to hair product, we can expect one hell of a show on April 20th, live only on DAZN. There you go. So much content on the platform, as I said, beef as well as 40 days available on the platform to watch in full now. All three episodes of 40 days available on platform and on YouTube. Look who's joined us. The busiest man in showbiz. Now, how are you here? Is this no, you? No, I heard a conversation you? that went a little bit like this. Oh, Devin's late. We need to fill some time. Let's get yeah. Eddie in. Oh, no, I mean, no, I, no, I am a chief filler. No, basically. kind of, because yeah. every time we do a show here, like if we're a little light and we need to waste you know, 10 minutes, Eddie, you can three questions. Thanks, He's mate. good to go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Really well. appreciate that. Eddie, Eddie should have got my side of the Brit side. Yeah, 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 Americans yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of talk that nonsense, what they said. Eddie, you know, I, I was thinking about you when I sort of saw all Ryan's antics throughout the week. Just because you've been in fight weeks, which have had the likes of Derek Chisora, throwing tables and chairs, Dillian White. It, compare this to that. I've never seen anything like it. Really? I mean, the most bizarre seven or eight weeks. Listen, and I cannot believe we're standing here now 24 hours away from the fight because at the first press conference, I was thinking, there's absolutely no way this fight's happening. You know, you could see the signs that the behavior was changing. Mm. It has just snowballed into the most bizarre run of episodes. I mean, I've watched it like the Truman Show, you know, like from afar, thinking, is this actually real? I've never seen it from a fighter before. I think, by the way, it might be irrelevant in terms of his performance because I think him being a little bit out there in this fight is not the end of the world for him. Like, if he goes out there aggressive and lets his hands go, he's going to be dangerous in this fight. But if he tries to box with Devin Haney, he's going to get absolutely schooled. And um, I think it's also been difficult for Devin. You know, people haven't really talked about that. Like, you've got to be watching this guy on social media thinking, there's no way he's fighting. You're putting the hours in in the gym, the road works, the hard spars, and you're seeing this guy, like, turning up and Derek James kind of walking around the gym going, what's going on? So I think it's been hard for, for Devin to stay motivated like he would do if he saw Ryan Garcia looking like a machine coming into this fight. So I think it's a dangerous fight either way. I expect Devin Haney to do the business. But I do think Ryan Garcia is going to be dangerous in there. And to a degree, there is, to your point, a method to the madness, right? Because he is trying to get under the skin of Devin Haney, and I think he's achieved that, maybe more so than any opponent Devin's faced in his pro career. I mean, George Cambosis kind of tried to do it to Devin Haney. But Lomachenko's you know what, though, Chris? It's, like, it's not traditional. So, like, sometimes when a guy's trying to get under your skin and you're in a head-to-head -head with him and he's saying this and he's saying that and he gives you a shove, it's just another day at school. This is, like, well out there. Like, no one's ever seen him. Like, the things he's saying, the way he's looking, the way that he appears to be training. So, in, you know, I think mentally it's a tough spot for Devin. Like, you just got to be, you don't, you don't know what this guy's going to do next. I'm kind of like, 
I saw you at the press yesterday, you were like behind him, and I was just looking across at Ryan Garcia the whole time going, and I like, kept looking up at you, and you were like looking at me going, like, it's the unpredictability of what he has been doing and what he might do tomorrow night. He might come in there like an absolute lunatic and just come straight for Devin and try and take him out in this fight. He may dance around, he might try and frustrate him. He might, I don't think he knows what he's going to do. And that's the danger of going in and fighting someone like that. that it gives him another layer to, to his game. But I think the cream will rise to the top in terms of the preparation, in terms of the ability. And I believe, don't be surprised to see this man quit on his stool tomorrow night in this fight as the fight goes on just one of those no mass moments i've been around you for a few years eddie and you're always very close with your fighters regardless of what level what advice would you be giving to ryan in the lead up to this week what would you have been saying to him i mean you, you'd hope that there's enough people around him that care enough about him to make the right decisions and because of that people like derek james people like oscar and particularly his family i don't believe they would let him in the ring if he wasn't capable of performing and, and, and maybe even winning this fight. So you just got to be close. You know, I've seen this kind of behavior before in fighters and, I've, you know, it's very noticeable. People that have, you know, gone through a little bit of a tough time mentally and emotionally and others that have, you know, had deeper problems. And it's all the same signs that, that you're seeing here. So I don't think there's anyone that can't be a little bit concerned for Ryan Garcia, but the reality is, we haven't really had conversations with him. We don't. We haven't seen him in the gym. We don't really know the truth. Yeah. Hopefully, the truth is he's ready to go tomorrow night. But it's going to be wild either way. How do you see this fight for Devin? Obviously, it's a title defense for him. But I look at it as something bigger, maybe a king-making type of moment. Not exactly on the lines of Mayweather, Arturo Gatti, or Pacquiao, De La Hoya, but. Ryan is the more well-known commodity yeah. to the mainstream fan base in this fight. How do you see this in terms of importance for Devin Haney? I always felt that this was the, per the perfect fight for Devin in terms of building his profile to the next level. We just did a lovely gate in San Francisco, you know, good numbers, good interest with progress, but we need to take him to the next level. And to do that, you always need a dance partner. Ryan Garcia is the perfect dance partner, especially when you know you can win the fight as well. I just hope that when Devin wins this fight, people don't just say, yeah, but Ryan wasn't himself. Ryan wasn't prepared because you've got to give Devin credit now. You know, he's gone to Australia twice to fight Cambosas. He's come back. He's fought Lomachenko. He moved up. He fought Regis Progre. Now he's fighting Ryan Garcia. Like, the kid's on a hell of a run. Are you in favor of this business model? Because you've lost Devin Haney at yeah. times. You've gotten him back at times. Uh, look, Devin's made it clear he wants to do kind of short-term deals mm -hmm. so he can have the flexibility to do the big fights. Is that a good thing? Yeah, it's a dangerous thing if you don't quite have the problem. I mean, the, you know, the, the standout name to do it was Canelo Alvarez, mm -hmm. and it's worked very well for Canelo Alvarez. For me, I like to have the security, uh, to give a fighter security of a long-term deal. The market can change, the game can change, your performance can change, and then you're stuck without a deal. You know, and I think with Devin, if the deal is the right one, he will sign a longer-term deal, but we had him for, what, I don't know, eight, ten fights. He had to go to top rank because they froze us out. Then he's back with us again now, and I expect that relationship to continue. But at the end of the day, you have to allow a fighter to chase their legacy. And you can't restrict them just because you have to, they have to fight on your network. Once they get to a certain level, the money changes, the opportunity changes. It's great to allow a fighter to have flexibility. And not just saying it because we're on a zone broadcast, but they have been fantastic to us in actually allowing fighters just to pop over, take an opportunity, and sometimes build the profile. But, you know, for me, Devin's chasing greatness, whatever platform that may be. Uh, Devin Haney's progression uh, under you and away from you has been fantastic so far, right? It's been, it's been steady in terms of winning the fights that we want to see him win, in terms of bums on seats as well. You said something at the press conference about him being the star or potentially could be the star of U.S. boxing. Um, this side of the town, it is Canelo Alvarez who's the star of boxing. How far away is Devon from becoming the face of boxing over here? Well, he needs those fights, as Chris says, you know, those profile building fights. This is the start of that, Ryan Garcia. The other ones that he has to box off are the likes of Teofimo Lopez, Javonte Davis, you know, even a Shakur Stevenson. There's such a great mix at the moment around those names. And obviously you've got Subriel Matias there as well, our other world champion at 140. And then you look at the other American talent, even young Ray Ford coming through, Diego Pacheco. But look at Boots Ennis as well. You know, that these guys, they should be superstars. And it really baffles me that they don't get built in their hometown. Like, you know, we had a, we had a media um, 
breakfast with Boots this morning. It's like he hasn't boxed in Philadelphia for six years. Like, you're talking about, in my opinion, pound for pound, potentially the, the star of boxing. A kid that's so popular in Philadelphia, which is a tremendous fight city. And you just, how are you not building him there? And it, it makes, it, you know, it's a bit like Deontay Wilder. You've got to get around these fighters. You've got to pump them up. And you've got to make them feel like a king. And Deontay, like sometimes they get flat. You know, I'm sitting there talking to the media about boots. And he's going, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's me. I'm like, yeah, you better believe it because you're a true great. And when we fill up the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia in July, the star is born. And, you know, we've got to try and build these guys. So I think this is a great opportunity for Devin to keep that star building. Long way to go to get to the commercial profile of a Floyd Mayweather. But one thing's for sure, he's very good. He's 25 years of age and he'll fight anybody. Yeah, it was a perfect segue, sorry Chris, to other superstars. Five versus five yeah. comes up June the 1st, obviously headline, Baturbia versus Bivol. You've got your five, Frank's got his five. You mentioned Deontay Wilder, you've made him captain. You must be happy with the five that you've got. Really happy. And you know, listen, every fight's a 50-50 fight. Mm. You can argue 60-40 either way and there's slight favourites with a bookmaker, but every fight's a pick and fight. That card is absolutely tremendous top to bottom. And, you know, I was around the guys... I'm, again, about, you know, pumping them up, making them feel like, you know, I was running with Ray Ford over Regent's Park. I'm getting into Deontay Wilder. I'm trying to give him the motivational speak. Ammo Williams, get yourself focused on Hamza Shiraz. Craig Richards, we need you to do a job on, on uh, um, Willie Hutchinson. Oh, Willie yeah, and, like, you know, these guys, it means a lot to them. And it's a brilliant, brilliant concept. Great night of boxing and, yeah, particularly Wilder Zhang. I can't wait. Yeah, particularly, though, better be up against Bebel, which is a fight that I don't think we would have gotten without Saudi Arabia's no. involvement. I mean, people have been trying to make that fight. You've been trying to make that fight for years, but the money just wasn't out there. Now it is, and we finally get what I think is one of the biggest fights ever in the light heavyweight division. Yeah, I mean, look, the undisputed crown between two pound-for-pound -pound greats. Um, two unbeaten fighters. You know, one's never heard the final bell. He's extremely dangerous. The other one is a master tactician. Um... It's a very tough fight. I believe Dimitri Bivol will do the business. But you're right, you know, without the, the interest from Saudi Arabia and His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh, that fight wouldn't get made. As I said, two Russian fighters who fight in America, they need to make sure that they earn the type of money that will set themselves up for life and generations after them. And now they're being able to do it. And for His Excellency to give you a night of boxing like Bivol Betabiev, Wilder against Zhang, Ford against Ball, Shiraz against Ammo Williams, Craig Richards, and Dubois against Hergovic as well. Like, this is probably the best card I've ever seen, top to bottom. And by the way, that comes two weeks after Fury Usyk. Yeah. Right? It's a hell of a run. And two weeks before that, it's Canelo Munguia. Exactly. Uh, and guess what? Over. And the common denominator? All of the zone. That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> but what's it like for you as a promoter? Obviously, look, Matram, it started in the UK, fantastic fights in the UK, some big fights. You mentioned Dimitri Bivol there, uh, a foreign fighter. You mentioned Raymond Ford, Boots Ennis. What's it like now, Matram, having so much international talent under it's, it? It's all part of the plan. You know, we want to be, we are the only global promotional company in the world. And we know we're never going to dominate boxing and, you know, own the sport like a UFC, but we want to be the dominant force. I feel like we're the best promotional company in the world. For years and years over here in America, you know, they were trying to get the conversation, say, don't sign with Hearn, don't sign with Matrim. They're from the UK. They don't know what you're doing. And then you sign Canelo Alvarez, and then the game changes a little bit. You know, and now with a signing of Boots Ennis, it's all of those generations of fighters that have all been told in the past, don't sign with Eddie Hearn and Matrim. They're going, you know what? I need to be with these guys. And they do. And we're coming for all of that pound for pound top 10, top 15. We're in conversations with four or five of those guys right now. Right now, I believe every fighter understands they must be a DAZN fighter. Every major fight is on this platform. And we are coming to sign the best talent in the world and put on the best shows internationally. And um, it's an unbelievable run coming on. We've never been more motivated. You know, the new love triangle with, with uh, Frank Warren and, and His Excellency is, uh, has been amazing. And just feel very excited about the, the future of the sport. So you signed Boots Ennis, and that was a big signing, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters that's out there, maybe the heir to Terrence Crawford. A multi-fight deal for Boots. We know that is mandatory, is going to be coming up at some point this summer. But if you could map out a three-fight plan for Boots Ennis over the next year, year and a half, what would it look like? Well, I'll go a four-fight plan. It looks something like this. Cody Crawley, that's the mandatory. Marius Barros, the WBC champion. 
Stanny Onis, the WBA champion, and then step up and take on Terence Crawford. I cannot tell you how confident Boots Ennis is about beating Terence Crawford. When I looked in this man's eyes this morning, I said, do you want to fight Crawford? He went, please. He said, I know I beat him. You know, he's an outstanding talent. He's coming up shortly uh, in, onto the stage here. And, you know, you're hearing him. That's, that's Boots, not Boots from the crowd. <laughs> and um, sure I believe sure this okay. man right here is the absolute future of boxing. But like, I think he's going to beat everybody. I really do. And I cannot wait to be a part of that journey. Because you put them up, you line them up, and he will take them out. And um, we're going to build him nicely, hopefully in Philadelphia next, and then unify the division, try and become undisputed at 147, and then step up and take Terence Crawford out. That was the best 15-minute film ever. It was. It was only 15 Massive minutes. Ball. Incredible. So now you want to kick me out for the, the star of boxing? Nah, you, you can stay. You can stay. You're always promoting now. Oh, that's you true. Can, yeah. you, can, you can certainly stay. I just remind you of some of the production that's gone behind the scenes in building Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Again, a quick reminder, here's 40 Days. Ryan could fight in the amateurs. He was a good fighter, and you know he was like probably I would say my biggest rival in the amateurs. Nobody beat me three times. Ryan did. Since we turned pro, we've been on a collision course. It was only a matter of time, and uh, now the time has finally came. I can do this with my eyes closed. He got fame outside of boxing. Props to him. I got fame in boxing, and I got the the accomplishments in the sport of boxing because that's what I dedicated myself to. You can rise to fame as a TikToker, but all roads in the 135 pound, 140 pound division go through Devin Haney. I can do this with my eyes closed. It's too easy. Too easy. We all fighting for something. And on April 20th, we're going to see who wants it more. Antics is about over with. They want to see, they want to see antics. They want to see me beat the shit out of him. They seen him playing. You see the antics? Now they want to see what I'm going to do to him. Devin Haney can do something to Ryan Garcia that has never been done, and that's make him wish that he hadn't put on a pair of gloves that night. Down he goes. I can do this with my eyes closed. Fights. Hey, we welcome everybody back to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York. We've got two more fights we will put up on the scale for you. Again, this will be our opener tomorrow night live on the zone at 8 p.m. on the East Coast, 5 on the West Coast, brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds in this DAZN opener scheduled in the Super Welterweight Division. First to step up on the stage from De Plain, Illinois, Nathaniel Gillimore. And his opponent from Cleveland, Ohio, a 2016 U.S. Olympian. He is bad news, Charles Conwell. He's back, Charles Conway. We've been waiting for nearly two years to see him back in the ring. He will come back. Not, not an easy one as well against Nathaniel Gallimore, but good to see him back. Yeah, Charles Conwell, 2016 Nathaniel U.S. Gallimore, Olympian, who had some hype behind him when he came into the pro ranks, been dealing with managerial issues over the last couple of years that have sidelined him for nearly a year and a half. Now he's back. This will be his first fight with Goldeboy. He's expecting to fight at least two or three times over the course of the rest of this year. Tough opponent here. In Gallimore, no pushover. I saw him fight in L.A. last year against Surrey Boachuk, a pretty good fight there. Uh, this is going to be, I think, a pretty good fight. Yeah, and you've already, again, put your matchmaker hat on, and you said, look, you're in the same weight class as a certain Virgil Ortiz. You're with the same promotional company as a Virgil Ortiz, same broadcaster. That's a fight that should be made. Yeah, I think you want, if you're Charles Conwell, you want to remind people that you're back first. You yeah. want to get some wins under your belt, maybe win two, three times in 2024. And then, look, Charles Conwell is still ranked relatively high by at least one of the sanctioning bodies. So he's going to be in a position to fight for a world title sooner rather than later. And a Virgil Ortiz fight would be excellent in 2025. 
Charles Cornwell in incredible shape. And it's crazy to think of how much the 154-pound division has changed and moved since he last fought. Jamel Charlo was the man with all the belts. Jamal Charlo could be coming back very soon. But it's changed a lot in the last 12 to 18 months. Yeah, it certainly has. And Charles Conwell has watched it very closely. This was someone that a couple of years ago thought he'd be in that position to fight for a world title right now at this point. Obviously, those issues kept him out of the ring, but he believes he's on that level. And you look at the way the titles have fractured over the last few months with Jamel Charlo vacating or being stripped of all of them. Charles Conwell believes he's going to be in that mix pretty soon. Charles Conwell goes by bad news, 18 and 0, 13 knockouts for the Cleveland native. Proud representative of the U.S. Olympic boxing team in 2016. That undefeated record on the line tomorrow night against the upset-minded Illinois native Nate the Great Gallimore. They will face off one final time before squaring off tomorrow night here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you, gentlemen. We will see you tomorrow evening. In just a moment, we will send it on over to Ariel Hawani for a couple of words with our fighters. Thank you very much, Joe. Nathaniel, I know it's been a, a bit of a rough patch as of late. What are the lessons that you learned from the recent fights that you've had that you're looking to implement in this fight tomorrow night? Um, first of all, I don't got too much to say. Um, I just want to say just tune in Saturday night. I got something special for you. Looking forward to it. Good luck to you, my friend. Let's say hello now to Charles Conwell, who's making his promotional debut for Golden Boy. I know it's been a frustrating period for you. You've been gone for almost two years, Charles. First, can I ask, why did you ultimately sign with Golden Boy? Oh, man, it was just a, it was just a great opportunity with legends that's promoting me, pushing me. They, they, know, they understand how it is to be a boxer, so I think it was just, you know, perfect. And I hear Bernard and Oscar saying you're going to make that statement. I, I presume that you agree with that assessment of what's to come tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. I know y'all seen these abs, man. This is hard work, man. I can ask those abs some questions, too. Maybe uh, grade some cheese off those. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, the hard work was put in. I've always been working the whole time. I just can't wait to put on a show for y'all tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know, Gallimore, man, Thank a you, few everyone. words up there on stage, but he has been in again with Bowie Chuck. He was in with Sebastian Fendora. He's been in with Erickson Lubin. This is a real fight for Charles Conwell coming off that long layoff. And I love seeing it through World Championship is on the line. WBA Super Flyweights will take center ring. First up, from Cartago, Costa Rica, David Jimenez. Now, this is the fight that I think a lot of people are saying could be fight of the night. I think a, a genuine 50-50 fight. I know a lot of people that are actually swaying to the Olympian, David Jimenez, who we've seen the fight. He's been over to the UK as well, fought at Wembley Stadium. Scrappy Ramirez here has got a tough one. There's no doubt about it. He's going to have to dig deep, I think, to get the W tomorrow night. Yeah, he really is. And I give Scrappy Ramirez a lot of credit for taking this fight. He's the number one ranked contender by the WBA, which means he is in line for a world title shot for the belt currently held by Kazuto Ioka. So he could have taken a showcase fight. David Jimenez is not a showcase fight. Fifth ranked by the WBA. Coming off a win a few fights ago against Ricardo Sandoval. I saw him at the press conference yesterday, Ade, and he sounds like a guy that feels like he's being disrespected during this whole buildup. That this is the Scrappy Ramirez show, and people are forgetting about him. Forget about David Jimenez at your own peril. This guy can really fight. Scrappy Ramirez must be a promoter's dream. He looks the part, doesn't he? Talks well as well, comes to fight. Wants to stay busy. Will take any on, on anyone, as you just mentioned. Doesn't have to take this fight. Almost put his hand up to say, I want to be on the card. I want to fight. If you're Oscar, you want this show to continue. Won't be easy, but you want this to continue. Yeah, absolutely. Scrappy Ramirez, undefeated now, fighting at 115 pounds. Comes out of Brickhouse Boxing in Los Angeles. See on stage Julian Chua. His trainer, one of the best young trainers in boxing today, also guide Zerto Ramirez, who picked up a cruiserweight title a few weeks back. So a lot of talent in that gym and a big test coming up tomorrow night for Scrappy Ramirez. Costa Rica contra los Estados Unidos mañana, tomorrow night, the world title. Super flyweight interim WBA strap on the line. David Jimenez of Costa Rica. And of course, LA's own Scrappy Ramirez. The undefeated 
Chad Ramirez of California. You just knew this was going to happen. As soon as these two came face to face, I knew. And look, you can see, you, you mentioned Jimenez there with a, a chip on his shoulder. You're seeing it kind of play out there. Yeah, and I like the size of Jimenez. Jimenez has fought mostly 112 pounds. So Scrappy is the more natural 115 power. But Jimenez, his one loss came to Artem Delaki, and that's a world title fight. So he has been in with some good opponents, good fighters. He is very much a live opponent this fight tomorrow night. He said, oh, you speak Spanish. Claro que si hablo español, papi. Dice que todo huele a la mierda. Tú también huele a mierda, coño. Hey, tomorrow's 420. We gonna roll them up and spark them up. You feel me? Yeah. I feel you. Look, a lot of people were a little surprised that you agreed to a fight against such a game and tough opponent when you have that title shot coming up, potentially in Japan. Why did you say yes to him? Because he got the resume, man. That's a good, he got a lot of experience. Tú tienes experiencia, eso es lo que yo quiero, papi. Yo no le tengo miedo a nadie. What did you just say? What did you say? He, he understands. All right, well, I'll so. Like, he's hot. He's bad. Está pelón, papi. Mañana, pelón, pelón, este. Mañana, las siete. Te quebro el machete. All right, great stuff, Scrappy. Good luck to you. Joe? Well, I think we're both excited. Actually, I think we're all excited for that WBA Super Flyweight Interim World Championship. It's tomorrow, the second fight on the DAZN pay-per-view card. We will be back in just a few moments, as we'll send it back over to TV. Ariel Hawani, take it away. You've got an interview. Okay, I'm here with David, and you'll be interpreting, yes? Okay, David, what were, what were, you, what were you saying to Scrappy? No, yo le digo que mañana lo que van a volar son pedazos de nalga. Nunca ha tenido un boxeador del calibre como el que va a tener mañana enfrente. Lo que ha tenido son puro bulto, esos cinturones son de mentira. I just told him, tomorrow he's going to see what I'm all about. He's going to cry because he's going to never face someone like me. Those belts right there, he bought them at Toys R Us. I'm going to make sure he knows that tomorrow. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Joe. All right, Ariel. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, tomorrow it's going down right here at Barclays Center. We hope you get some tickets and join us. If not, catch it on DAZN Pay-Per-View, Golden Boy Boxing. We're back in just a few moments to conclude our official ceremonial weigh-in here in Brooklyn. That was an interesting face-off between Scrappy Ramirez and David Jimenez. Again, that's the fight a lot of people are saying is 50-50 and could steal the show. Don't forget, though, the main event is a big one. Devin Haney, the current WBC super lightweight champion, taking on Ryan Garcia. Here is 40 Days. I beat down doubt. I just shove it to the ground. Just like when people say I'm not going to be a great boxer, when I was coming up, I beat that doubt down. Every time I try to come up and say it's almost impossible to make it there, I beat that doubt down because I let go of the fear of it. But then God rebuilds me and I get stronger. Time. Rather than break from boxing, he took the same approach in rings and out of them. Fight through. Anything. Even in his first defeat against Gervonta Tank Davis. Mentality was boxing is in a terrible place right now. And this is my moment to just do something about it. So I f took everything they put on me. Got beaten down. Got a separated rib in training. Had everybody tell me I'm sh Crying my eyes out because I can't lose the weight. Get to the fight. I'm weak as f I know I'm going to lose. I don't give a f this is my chance. And then, boom. Obviously, I lost, but I felt peace. Everybody thought it would be sad. I felt peace because I felt like I did something for God. And then after that, I felt real spiritual strength. And I felt strong. And I felt nobody could touch me. Nobody's ever going to do that to me in negotiations ever again. Nobody's going to ever play me ever again. And now I'm coming different. Here we go. Going gets tough in the ring, I've been through it. Like when me and Devin get in the ring, and if it really does go down, we're both cut, I'm coming out there on top. There we go, good, good, good. This is the chance for me to try to establish myself as the king of boxing.
and I'm going to sacrifice everything I have in that ring. This means more to me than anything I've done in my career so far. Every now and again, a fighter comes along that is very, very special. I know, y'all been waiting for this. It's been a minute. He has all the potential to be a superstar of American sport. I had to make sure my next move was the move. And it's time to show the world just how great he is. Boost time's match from baby. Let's get it. Welcome to the best team in boxing, to the world welterweight champion, Jerron Boots Ennis. Oh yeah. You know, I'd like to think that I got my ear to the ground in boxing. I like to think I know what kind of goes on behind the scenes. When I saw Eddie tweet and put up on Instagram that he has signed Jaron Boots Ennis, I had to kind of refresh my Instagram. I thought, what's going on? Eddie's got one of the biggest names in boxing under the matchroom banner. Before I introduce you, Boots, Eddie, you got this man now. <laughs> Here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Eh? Look oh, at this. man, I'm so excited. I mean, ever since we broke the internet with the announcement, yeah. everybody in boxing knows about this guy. Now it's time to tell the world. You're talking about pure, pure elite. You're talking about the likes of Crawford and Spence. I'm talking about Leonard. I'm talking about this is how good this kid can be. He's going to light up Philadelphia. He's going to light up American boxing. He's going to light up US boxing, world boxing. He's got absolutely everything. The ability to beat everybody. He's got style. He's got speed. He's got power. When you spell greatness, it spells E-N-N-I-S. It's time to put him to the test. This guy, I'm telling you, is a future of sport. Everyone tuned in right now. Remember the name, Jerome Boots Ennis. He's coming for everything at 147. Then he's moving to 54. He told me earlier he could end up at 175. I'm not talking about a world champion. I'm not talking about a unified champion. I'm not talking about an undisputed champion. I'm talking about a multi-weight undisputed champion. Three, four divisions. I'm so excited, Jerome. It, it clearly is. I mean, look, I've been around Eddie for a long time, and he signed a lot of talent, both in America and Europe, and the excitement of him signing you has to be the most excited I've ever seen him. <laughs> why Matchroom and why Eddie Hearn? Like, everyone wanted the signature. Everyone wanted it. Why Eddie? Uh, I feel like this is the best, best of my career. You know, I feel like, you know what? I see what Eddie been doing, and, and I see how he move guys, and I like what he's doing. He get behind his guys 100%, so I like that, you know, and then I'm going to get my 100%, and we might be the best duo in boxing. You know what's crazy? Um, obviously, look, you're from Philly, and we've got Bernard Hopkins here, Mr. Philadelphia himself, and we never see you fight in Philly. Yeah. How exciting is it for you to go back and fight in your hometown in front of your home fans and show people what you can do? It's going to be amazing. You know, I can't wait. You know, uh, it hasn't been a big fight in Philly in uh, who knows when, you know, a long time, you know, and, and, and the place that I'm going to do that is going to be amazing, you know, because nobody have, have ever fought there before. So I, I can't wait. I'm ready to shine, ready to show out. It, it's time. It, it's, it's my time. I'm going to show the world I'm the best fighter in the world, and I'm going to stamp my name in boxing. It, it's time, you know. Eddie, look, I know, I know you're very excited, Eddie, and, and you've signed some fantastic American talent so far. Devin Haney right, is under the resume. Demetrius Andre, who, who couldn't get that fight that you wanted to get him, why is this man so special? What makes him so special in the 147 division? No, as I said earlier, honestly, the guy's a genius. Like, I've been trying to sign him for five years. I saw it that long ago. Everyone in boxing has been talking about him, and I feel like they've kind of been like, they've put him in a corner because they want to stoke the fire, because they don't want him to fight their guys, because they know how good he is. Oh, we don't want, need, we don't want him to go near Spence. We don't want him to go near Crawford. Keep him over there. Keep him under control. Now, we're going to waft the fire, right? The flames are going to burn out of control. And now it's a great time for him to attack that 147 pound division because look at the other champions Barrios, Stanionis, those are the guys that can be offered big money to unify the division and that has to be the plan. Philadelphia number one priority. Let's get that fight locked in for July. Let's go and fill up the Wells Fargo Stadium in his own city, right? Been six years since you boxed in Philadelphia. No yeah. real big time boxing since I know. Bernard Hopkins, you know, back in the day. Here he is, the executioner. So, you know, he's a Philly legend. This is a Philly legend. But it's about chasing greatness. It's about unifying the division. It's about becoming undisputed. It's about moving up. Him against Terence Crawford, I'm telling you, that fight in 
six, 12 months. That's the biggest fight in boxing. Uh, uh, and when I told him about him earlier, he gave me a look in his eye and tell me, I will beat that guy. And listen, I'll rate Terence Crawford, but we're ready to roll the dice, baby. And I think we got the A side. But, yep. but that's the one you want, Bruce. Obviously, look, you got your mandatory first, but I've seen the little back and forth with you and Crawford. That must be the dream fight for you. Uh, definitely. You know, that's the fight that I've been wanting. wanting. You know, he, him, Earl Spence, but Earl moved up. And I, I guess above moving up too, but they got to see me. Yeah. I'm, I'm coming for them. What, what about fights? Obviously, look, Matchroom do fights all over the world now. Is there ever been a dream of fighting in the UK? There's a certain Conor Ben back there, maybe fighting in Saudi Arabia. Do you have that dream as well? Uh, like I always say, I don't, I don't matter where to fight at. It could be in their living room. <laughs> it could be in their kitchen. No matter where it's at. I, I, I just love fighting. I love beating people. I love knocking them out. And I just want to fight the, the best guys, the great guys. So I can show my talent and show the world why I'm the best fighter in the world. So I just want my opportunity, and the time is now. That's what we want to see, though, as fight fans, isn't it, Eddie? I mean, look, we want him to go back to his hometown. We want him to go back to Philly. But we want to see these fighters everywhere. We're a global company. This is a global sport. It's a global star, right? So we start Philly, America, Vegas, Saudi Arabia, UK. It doesn't matter. The whole world's got to see this man. Right. You now we're going back to the greats. That's what I'm talking about. I want this guy to be remembered in decades and decades in the Hall of Fame. To walk among the greats that we talked about. He can do it. And it's so exciting to represent someone that's in the absolute prime. I could just make the fights and go, go and do the business. And I know he's going to do the business. So, like I say, we feel powerful right now with this link up. And together we're going to go and make sure he gets what he deserves out of sport. You know, the payday, the, the toughness of the sport warrants and deserves, but also the legacy that will be written for many years in the history of the sport. Uh, well, obviously here for Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, you're a boxer, you're also a boxing aficionado, you know the sport inside out. How are you seeing this one play out? Devin Haney unbeaten, Ryan Garcia just one defeat. How do you see it? Uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great fight. It's a, you know, two guys at the, at the top of the week, it's a great fight, you know, made the best man win, you know. Indeed, it is it's a great fight. I spoke to Haney yesterday with a little fight at meeting. I was like, 147 boots? Kind of gave me a little wink and a little nod. Has there ever been an idea of you about fighting Devin Haney? Now that he's at 140, he's a big 140 guy. Do you look at Devin Haney potentially as an opponent down the line? I look at anybody. As a, Anyone as a, can get it. Anybody that's around that 147, 140, 154, 160, 168, no matter who it is. Damn. I, it, I, I'm ready. I'm, We're going I'm up. ready. I'm and you know, I'm standing next to Boots, <laughs> and I, you're big. <laughs> yeah. You're big. You know, I can see how you're a big guy. I don't want to ask what you walk around that because you always make weight, but you must walk around quite big. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and you like, never ask him fight and I wait for like, I'm like, one second, I'm looking at my size. I'm like, it's kind of big. But that's a super fight down the line as well. Devin Haney boots is a super fight. Yeah, look, when, when you stand next to the guy, to think that he's a, I mean, you know, listen, Devin's a big 140, really. And he's tiny next to boots. Like, you're talking about a guy, easy go 154, easy go 60. And that is so exciting. You know, I mean, you talk about fights in years to come where you see this guy up at middleweight, but that's what I'm saying about the true great greats. You know, you talk about people like, I mean, you know, to, to mention the names of Sugar Ray Leonard and those kind of guys, that's what you've got to aspire to be. This is how special I think this young man is. And they're guys that just move across the weights throughout their career to, to get the biggest fights in the sport. And he can do it. He can easily fight at 54 and 60 and maybe even beyond. But first, we've got to rule this division and we've got to pick up all the silverware and dominate and then move to 54. Everyone be careful, everyone beware. Jarris Boot Ennis is here. Let's He's go. here as well. 147, 154, 160, 168. Anyone can get it. Alright, let's focus back on this one. Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Here's a quick reminder of why you have to tune in tomorrow. We got a great fight for them, no doubt. We need to fight. Hey, we're good fighters. Let's fight. Live on the zone worldwide, April 20th. Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to ignite. Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Ryan Garcia, 
Lightning facts. Explosive. Unmissable. Going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one Alice. Live on the zone worldwide, April 20th. You want the real fight? You can find me. I'm out. We are getting close, I, I can confirm, we are getting close. Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia are very, very close to the arena now, so they're going to take stage very, very soon. But, talking about taking stage, look who's joined us on the stage as well. Philly's very own Bernard Hopkins. Uh, Bernard, we just had Jaron Ennis here, yes, and we're just talking yes, about Jaron Ennis because, exactly, Philly a Philly right fighter, right? Yeah. I mean, how good do you think he is? Eddie, you know Eddie. Eddie will sell everyone. Well, well he's one thing for right? sure, he does have the pedigree from Philadelphia uh, to show his skills. Now that he's time with matchroom boxing, Eddie Hearns, uh, I'm looking forward to see him be in matches and fights that people can say that he deserved what he's, I believe, is going to receive down the line. But right now, he's lacking the signature fight, yeah. which should be around the corner based on the big signing with matchroom boxing. He's good though, isn't it, Sergio? So far, unbeaten. And standing right next to him, he's a very big 147 pounder as well. Every fighter sizes up other fighters, and he's huge. It's not just a sweater he's wearing, he's a big guy. He gets out upper body, yes, he's muscular. And talent wise, the closest thing you get to Bud Crawford is that man right there, is Boots Ennis. He's amazing. Had the Philly pedigree, forget about it. And, and to piggyback on what Sergio said, but in a different way. He wants to fight all them guys he mentioned, yeah. but he wants everybody in that weight division to define who he is even more than what he already know. That's what I get when I hear interviews from 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 Ennis, from his family, his, his father. He wants to be the best. He wants to be the best. Yeah, yeah. Put your promoter hat on for me. Is he ready for a Crawford right now? Like, would you make that fight, if available, would you make Boots versus Crawford right now? Yeah. Yeah? You know why? Because oh, he said no. He you know said why? no. You know why I said that? Why risk fighting top-level fighters in the top ten, five to number one, if it ain't for a championship? At this stage, with the fights that Bruce had, uh, that Ennis has, he has to understand that it comes a moment in each of those fights leading up to a world championship fight where you got to take that one or two risks before you get the world championship fight. So when I see him fight Crawford right now, because I believe he's championship quality last year, let alone now. So I think he's overdue. Not three years ago or three years back, but now. I think he's a year overdue for being tested with any world champion in that weight division, in that weight division. That's because you're speaking from the perspective of a Philly fighter, not a promoter. Put your promoter hat, B-Hop. You're not going to want to put him against Buck Crawford right now. You want to show him to the world. You want to promote him. You want to make him a bigger star. Boots has the talent. Now we need to put the talent in front of the eyeballs. That's what Eddie Hearn, he has that vision. If you think about a promoter, you got to milk that talent out and make him a huge star. Then you put him up against the Boots. And, oh, and I'm sorry, against the Crawford. Like, and, and yeah. thinking like a promoter, wow. and thinking like a promoter, <laughs> I'd rather take a shot at the big league, knowing what I what I have in my quote unquote stable, than mess around and board boredom sets in. It is his mind, and he thinks it's business as usual, and he looks bad one time. He got one time tonight fight a world champion from now on and look bad and the stock will go down. Opinions will Very be true. changed. Very true. So, while the iron is hot, why are we talking about him now because of the iron is hot? Let's execute whatever he can bring and whatever we know he has against the top fighters champions in that division. All right, the iron is very, very hot now for Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Obviously, Ryan is your guy, and you're very confident that Ryan can get the W. Obviously, he's up against, I think, a pound for pounder, a guy that is really hot right now in Devin Haney. Put your fighter hat back on now, because you have a lot of hats here, Bernard. Fighter hat. Well, how does Ryan Garcia beat Devin Haney? Beats him in the middle of the ring. He don't get caught up in trying to be 
different than what Ryan has been, what got him here? Ryan has to be Ryan. And, and that saying, he must keep him at advantage, at a disadvantage, and Ryan has to stay at advantage. In the center of the ring, Ryan is awesome. Haley cannot deal with the speed on the same level. And he got another problem, Devin Haley. Power. Power checks everything. It's the biggest equalizer. On top of that, you got a guy that's fast, a guy that's cat-like reflexes when it comes to reflexes. You hit me, I hit you back. If Ryan keeps this fight in the middle of the ring, and at a distance, only two feet away, maybe three, and use his height and his reach, and not go overboard and let his anxiety take over when he sees success in those punches connecting, he must stay calm when we, the audience, should think he should finish him. And that's going to be the key of this fight. Ryan being patient. Garcia, Ryan Garcia being patient. Devin Haney has to do the opposite. He must make it a dog fight. He must make it close, uncomfortable, so the anxiety, the anxiety can kick in. Whoever stick to their plan, no matter what adversity that each other give to each other, will win this fight easily. In terms of sticking to plans, Devin Haney's been the master of sticking to plans, even through tough fights against Jorge Linares and Vasily Lomachenko. Regardless of how those fights have played out, Devin's had a plan, and that plan so far keeps him unbeaten 31 and 0. Bernard, I love you, but you know what beats? You know what beats? You know what beats power? Technique. You know what beats power? Discipline, strategy, game plan. Fight IQ. You know that because you're a mastermind at that. Power didn't intimidate you against Trinidad. Technique beat, you, beat Trinidad. I think this is going to come down to Devin Haney's fight IQ, technique, discipline, and the fact that he's going to counteract the power. Power's not going to be an issue here. Ryan's size advantage is not going to be an issue here. It's going to come down to discipline. It's going to come down the range because it's going to... The thing about Devin Haney, he's a master at range. He doesn't let you break it. That's the reason Progre couldn't get inside. That's the reason Cambosis couldn't get inside. Ryan Garcia, in order to make it a dogfight, in order for him to use that power, he needs to break that range. How is he going to do that if you got a master boxer and a ring general like Devin Haney fighting behind the best jab in boxing? It's a tall, tall mountain to climb if you're Ryan Garcia. It's going to be more than just power, Brian. He, he make, look, Sergio make a great point. But this is one of the only times that I'll have to disagree with him. <laughs> but you know what? That's boxing of making decisions and, and predictions that we're going to sit there and see. We know one thing. It's not a one-sided fight. We got it basically close to even match, depending on who you're going with. And that's exciting for boxing, Sergio. And that's exciting for me. It's exciting for all of us as well, all the fans that are going to tune in at home. You see the QR code, make sure you scan it so you don't miss a part of. You can tell these guys are going back and forth. The fighters are going to go back and forth as well tomorrow. Joe We're Martinez is now finish. ready. Let's throw it back to Joe. And now, folks, we're ready to go with our next bout tomorrow night. Scheduled on the card, the third fight on the DAZN pay-per-view worldwide stream. Catch that action tomorrow on DAZN or here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. This bout 10 rounds scheduled for the WBA Intercontinental Super Middleweight Championship. It's brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and this bout in association with World of Boxing. Let's bring up first the challenger. He is from Nantes, France, undefeated in his career, 22-0-1 with 12 knockouts. Here is Pierre de Bombe. And his opponent, from Uzbekistan, fighting out of Indio, California, the reigning WBA Intercontinental Super Middleweight Champion, Beck the Bully Malakuzia! <laughs> WBA Intercontinental Super Middleweight Championship. 
the unbeaten challenger from Nantes, France, 22 0 in the world. The is interesting. Knockouts. Obviously, look, we've been focused on Melakuzia, rightly so. He's the bigger name. The Bomba spoke to his management team from Liverpool, and they've been begging Eddie Hearn to give them an opportunity because they think they've got something here. Obviously, it hasn't fought anything like a Melakuzia, but they think he's very capable of going to that next level, Chris. My concern with, with Bombay is that he fights with a very high guard. I've watched a lot of footage of him over the last couple of weeks. He keeps his hands very high when he fights, and that is a dangerous thing to do against a body puncher like Bechtel Melakuzia, who is as good as it gets when it goes to the midsection. The other thing, to your point, is the level of competition. His mm. last fight, he fought Derek Finley, 39 years old, in a six-round fight. That does not quite prepare you for a fighter on the level of Melakuzia, but... Maybe here fighting stateside, he will surprise us. Right, I guess, Sergio, look, they've got to take the step up, right? This is the step up. Sometimes it's not that these fighters can't do it, it's that they've never had the opportunity to do it. And if you're him right now, you're on a big card, you don't get a bigger platform to showcase your skills than this. This is a big step up for Demambe, and we already say we already seen Beck the Bully take big step big steps forward. And the fact that he came back from a knockout. A brutal knockout that shows resilience so not only does he have the pedigree being an olympian having the size the power the team the trainers now we know that he can come back from knockouts which is difficult to do so imambe is going to have his hands full right here but this is a perfect opportunity for him to shine on the big stage and there's a lot of motivation for Bector melacuzia he is part of that antonio diaz stable in southern california there are some bits of good winners coming out of there as of late mj akbadalia was of course the former unified champion at 122 we just saw israel madrimov win a world title at 154 shakram giasov knocking on the door of a world title opportunity so beck is ready for his turn at the plate Dimambe looks huge, ripped. He looks like a... All right, I'm here with the pride of France, Pierre Dimambe. Uh, Pierre, what do you say to people who say, yes, you've had a great run so far, a great career, but you have not fought anyone as tough as Bektamir just yet? Yeah, I know that, but I will show you how my, my talent, I will show you my, my talent on this night. I know he's a good fighter, and I'm a good fighter too, and you will see that on the, in the ring. Okay, merci beaucoup. Uh, félicitations pour l'opportunité, and good luck tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm, great, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. I waiting for this opportunity all my life, so I'm ready to win and take his belt. I was just trying to impress everyone with my French there, but thank you for speaking to me in English. It's worth a shot. Good luck to you, Pierre. Let's talk to Beck the Bully here, the pride of Uzbekistan. Beck Demir, it's nice to see you. Big fight for you, another big opportunity to prove that you are a legit talent in this division. Pierre has never fought anyone quite like you. What do you think of him, and what is the key to defeating him tomorrow night? I think that I was able to get a lot of it's going to be a great fight. Everyone is going to see a great fight. I have a good opponent in front of me. We both come to fight. It's been a great training camp. I'm ready, and it's going to be an exciting fight. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Hey. Want to say one more thing? Hey guys, Saturday bully time. Let's go. Listo. Yeah, I like it. Bully time, Joe. Back to you. The Spanish is coming in for Beck the Bully. International showdown tomorrow night. Super middleweights for that WBA Intercontinental Championship. All right, let's move on. We have another title on the line tomorrow night. A WBO Intercontinental Super Lightweight Championship featuring Sean McCall and his opponent, Arnold Barbosa Jr. Sean McCall first up on the stage from Belfast, 18-1. In his 19 professional fights, five knockouts to his credit. Sean McComb and known course, as the, the public right. nuisance, which is the charge the New York City police are going to hit Sergio Mora with after the fight on Saturday night. I knew that was coming. Well, well you gave him the low blow earlier. That's a come. Arnold Barboza, by the way, every time you speak to him, he seems to be in... like. Almost a mini rage of, I'm not getting the opportunities I deserve for my unbeaten record at 140 pounds. He wants to be right in the mix 
Uh, does he make your top 10? I've not seen your top 10 list, Chris. Is he kind of knocking on the door to that? He's knocking on the door mm. of that top 10. Arnold Barboza has been in a top position for the Sac Street Vibes for the better part of the last couple of years. He has been trying to lure Teofimo Lopez into a fight. Teofimo Lopez did not want that fight for his own reason. So Arnold Barboza split with top rank and will now fight, has been fighting for the last two fights now with Golden Boy Promotions, and he is hoping that this alignment with Golden Boy will put him in the world tighter picture soon. And Ade, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I see Peter Taylor up there on the stage with Sean McComb. You certainly do. He is there. Obviously part of Sean McComb's team. Sean McComb, by the way, a really, really tall, 140 pounder, very rangy. And again, speaking to him, obviously the bookies have him as a massive underdog, but look, he thinks I'm here, I want to spoil the party, and he wants to get in the mix at 140 pounds, Sergio. Yeah, I like Sean McComb a lot. Um, I I've watched a few of his fights over the last couple of days, and his last fight against Sam Maxwell, that was a, a, a solid performance. He doesn't get credit for his power, but he put Sam Maxwell down three times in that fight to win a lopsided decision, so you can't sleep in this fight on Sean McComb. Yeah, my only concern for him, look, there's several concerns. Fun. The first one, he's fighting Arnold Barboza Jr., but he fights at home all the time. He does fight a lot in Belfast. He fights a bit um, in the U.K. This is his first big fight away from home. So I do wonder how he's going to handle the bright lights of fighting on a big card here in New York. Yeah, it's always a red flag when a fighter doesn't fight outside his country because he's not really getting the experience he needs from different styles. You know, Arnold Barboza, he's an undefeated fighter who's hungry for the spotlight. I mean, this uh, this guy has star written on him, and finally he's getting the promotional backing, and he has a perfect opportunity with McComb here to look great on the big stage and, and show everybody that he belongs with the big names in a loaded division. Arnold Barboza is a very creative offensive fighter. You know, goes upstairs, downstairs. There's power, a little bit of power with both hands. Uh, I think he's going to put a lot of pressure on Sean. The loss in Sean's career came to Gavin Gwynn, and Gavin Gwynn took the fight to him in that one. Effectively made Sean McComb turn around and not want any more. So he is going to have to be on his toes all fight against a fighter like Arnold Barbosa. And there's no better way to impress in the 140-pound division when you are co-main, and the main event is a 140-pound title fight. Sean McComb, I know many moons ago you fought here in the United States. You're back on a massive card, a massive platform for you. What has this experience been like so far? I've enjoyed it. Um, I'm here to put on a show. It's strictly business. I have been say tracked by all the cameras and all the big personalities. I'm here to do me. And speaking of which, what do you have to do to beat him? Stick to the game plan, which we've worked on for numerous weeks now. And everything will go in my favor. Looking forward to it. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, now we'll have a word with Arnold Barboza Jr. Undefeated sensation. Arnold, it's good to see you. Good luck tomorrow. Looking forward to this fight very much. You know, I know at the presser you were saying if someone falls through, you'll be ready to go. And I know in the past you have said you want the big fights. You want the big opportunities. And perhaps in the past you haven't gotten those. A big performance tomorrow, do you think that leads you to big fights and big opportunities in the near future? Yeah, you know, this is a big opportunity in itself. You know, the card, the magnitude of it, um, you know, um, I'm grateful to be here. Uh, and of course, you know, making a statement tomorrow uh, leads to bigger things. With all the drama with Ryan uh, earlier today, did you did you send a text to Oscar and say you're ready to go in the main event if need be? He knows I'm ready. You know, he knows I'm ready, but, you know, Sean McComb is, is who it is right now. But, you know, we're still ready, so let's go. Looking forward to it. Good luck to you, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you. Ade, back to you. One more to go. Arnold Barboza Jr., big opportunity for him to impress, as Chris said there, against Sean McComb. He's going to come to fight, but a good opportunity nonetheless, Chris, for him to really showcase what he's got and hopefully crack your top ten. Yeah, great opportunity. I mean, Arnold Barboza, undefeated, has never been in a split decision win. All his wins that have come by decision have been unanimous decision. That speaks to how clean he has been fighting. So this is a good showcase opportunity for Arnold Barboza as the co-main event on this card. Yep, all down, one more to go. We are going to have the weigh-in for Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. 
next but we're going to quickly show you uh, the program that i absolutely love it's been fantastic to watch it and that is a snippet here of 40 days as camp comes to a close it's clear these fighters orbits are expansive but as april 20th approaches the story comes back into focus with brooklyn serving as the final stage. Well, yeah, we we partner amateurs multiple times, you know, and um, and the pros we're gonna we're gonna get it on when, when the time is right. You know, one guy that certainly has a history with you is the man to your left, also carrying a belt, Devin Haney. Hey, hold up, I need a belt too. If he's a champ, I'm a champ, right? I'm the champ. I'm the, I'm the champ, and if he wants a real fight, he can fight me. I, hey, I should be champ, right? Hey, we're good fighters. Let's fight. It's no real friends in boxing. It's a lonely sport. On April 20th, I will break Ryan Garcia. Now, two men long tethered eye the rarest thing in boxing, a legitimate game seven. We're fighting for the 140 pound title, and I'm gonna grip that in green belt off of Devin Haney if I have to, and I'm going to sacrifice everything I have in that ring. I gotta send him this message. I'm coming to you up. And for anyone who hasn't heard, this one counts. Devin, the dream Haney, has proven himself all over the world. Devin, the dream Haney! He's the one with a lot to lose. Triumph and his future becomes so bright it's blinding. Lose and begin to climb back. Ryan Garcia is not on my level, and that's for me to prove. King Ryan Garcia, in comparison, is the one with a lot to prove. King Ryan Garcia! Accomplished and thrilling, and a renowned celebrity isn't all that he wants. But to ascend even higher in his career, fame doesn't matter. Not now. Fist matter. The ones he promised for months to unleash on Haney's face. They turned me into a monster. He just switched something in my brain. That's why with Devin, I'm not playing with him. Now when he step in the ring with me, I'm not scared to hurt you. But game sevens are always decisive. Which means one man will prove and the other man will lose. I think I'm King Kong, Superman, Godzilla, Spider-Man, all of them. I am a bit of a maniac and I'm kind of a little crazy. I don't know how he's going to stop me. But, as always, these two is sure to be more to this story. This is my only opportunity right now. To me, it feels like do or die moment. We all fighting for something. And on April 20th, we're going to see who wants it more. I promise you, this is one to remember. The fans are in the building, they're here, they're waiting for the emergence of Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. As we are as well, we're waiting for both men to turn up, to make that wait, to weigh in. And obviously it is showtime on Saturday night, live on The Zone. Oscar De La Hoya has joined us well, the golden boy himself. Uh, these big nights, you've, you've done so many as a fighter, as a promoter. Still that same excitement, adrenaline? Oh yeah, yeah. every single time. It's like, uh, it's like... It's like riding a bicycle, you never forget. And, um, you know, this is, this is exciting to me. This is like actually lacing up the gloves. This is my, my adrenaline. This is, it's all about the fighters. It's all about the event. And, uh, you know, for us promoters, when you put this type of event together, you're, uh, you can now take a, a deep breath and, uh, and, just, and just relax, you know. But once they make weight, so once they make weight, we have, a, we have a fight. It is obviously a fantastic main event. The undercard is good as well. We've been talking about the undercard. Melikuzia, who's very close to a big shot, 168 pounds, Scrappy Ramirez yeah. versus David Jimenez. Some good undercard fights as well. Really exciting, uh, even fights. Yeah. You know, I think there's one guy who has one loss. Everybody else is undefeated. Uh, yeah, you're going to get some good fights on the pay-per-view telecast. Yeah, I mean, and, and look, the, when you look at what Ryan has been doing over the last couple of months, the social media yeah. activity, I mean, you have been, you were a fighter, had your had your good times in your career. What have you made of it? He's Ryan. He's unique. 
You know, he's uh, he's his own person. He does what he does. You know, everybody tells me, well, you know, can't you control him? Can't you do this? Can't you do that? Well, I'm not his babysitter. I'm not his manager. I'm his promoter. You know, we put the event together. We make it happen. But I don't know, man. When Ryan tells me I'm trolling, I don't know if I should believe him or not. Yeah. <laughs> when you see uh, Bernard Hopkins gets on the podium yesterday and he says, we have a fight. I mean, he was very clear cut. That was it. We have a fight. At any point where you was the, was the promotional team, were you guys worried that you wouldn't we wouldn't get to fight night? I'll tell you one thing. It 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 always is a concern, and you know this with every fighter, with every event, you never know what's going to happen. But this is too big. This is too big for both guys not to make it happen. You know, this is huge for boxing. This is huge for their careers. I strongly feel. I strongly feel that we will have one of the most intense fights tomorrow night. And imagine the intensity going up in the ring. I can't wait. What do you see as the path to victory for Ryan here? We know Devin's an expert boxer, top 10 pound for pound on most lists. What do you see as Ryan's path to victory? I think, I think he has to, what he's done outside the ring, gotten into his head. I've never seen Haney push somebody and get so angry. You know, I remember Floyd Mayweather with Marquez. I remember Floyd Mayweather with everybody getting into everybody's skin, under everybody's in everybody's head. Ryan Garcia is a master at doing that. And so what I expect from Ryan is just go in there and fight. Go in there and attack. Because you're going to have, you got to keep in mind, these guys rehydrate 20 pounds. But there's one who hits hard and there's one who doesn't. That's going to be the difference. So if Ryan goes out there first two, three rounds and lands something, you know he's going to end it. But then you have the master boxer. You have the master technician. Devin Haney is the best at it. People talk about the uh, antics, you know, going into the press conference, things like that. I'm old enough to remember, Oscar, some of the things that Floyd did to you during the press oh, yeah. conference oh, yeah. for your fight. Stole your luggage, oh, I yeah. believe, in the press stole conference. Stole my lunch. I stole your lunch in the press <laughs> conference. Like, there, like, this kind of stuff happens in big fight press conferences oh, yeah. by fighters that are trying to get under the skin of their opponents. Bro, I, I remember Floyd stealing my lunch doing everything he can. He brought a chicken to the press conference with a little gold medal, you know, <laughs> anything to get under your skin. And guess what? It did work. I was going to Because I wanted to chop his head off. <laughs> and it took me away from the game plan, you know. So it's odd because having seen Ryan throughout the whole promotion reminds me of Floyd. <laughs> Brian's a superstar. There's no two ways about it. You only have to look at the numbers he did against Javonte Davis. He's the guy that puts bums on seats. But ultimately, he needs to win and needs to perform. How important is it on Saturday that Ryan does perform to his absolute best to continue that yeah. rise as a boxing superstar? At this point, I, I don't know how important it is for him to win because after the Javonte Davis fight, he lost and he still probably even bigger so I don't know if it matters if Ryan wins or loses it also I mean it, it, it obviously depends on how he loses I mean if he loses first round knockout or whatever and or gets schooled then people are gonna think man okay wait let, let's think twice about Ryan but if it's a great fight 10th 11th round gets stopped whatever Ryan just gets bigger and bigger but if he wins I'm not going to see him for three months. <laughs> if he wins, he is the, some might say, that the face of boxing. If, if he wins, right. should be a fantastic fight. Um, we are waiting for the main event fighters to make their way to the stage. We are moments away. Not too long. Don't go anywhere. Not too long. Let's remind you, though, of why you have to buy this fight this Saturday. We had a great fight for them, no doubt. We need a fight. Hey, we're good fighters. Let's Live on DAZN Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to a night. Devin the Dream Haney, living the dream. Multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Ryan Garcia. 
Lightning facts, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one house. Live on Zone Worldwide, April 20th. He wants a real fight? He can fight me. Only fans of zone have teamed up to give audiences an exclusive look at the biggest up-and-coming boxers in the world. Oh, and it's over! That's a big knockout on the big stage. Learn more at OnlyFans.com slash DAZN. You know what? I, um, I have to admit, Chris, I don't agree with what Oscar said there. When I asked Oscar about... Why you ain't say that when he was here? Well, That's I, I exactly didn't, I didn't what get a I chance. Said, you know, yeah, I'm, I know Oscar still got a good left hook. But when, he, when I asked him, <laughs> does Ryan have to look good and win to continue to be a boxing superstar? Not superstar in terms of his social media presence. And he was very adamant, no, he doesn't. He said, he, you know, his stardom has, rose, has risen after the Javante Tank Davis defeat, which might be true. But from a boxing standpoint, he needs to look good tomorrow night, I think. Continue that ascendancy as one of the biggest names in the sport. Yeah, and we still don't know yet how big a star Ryan Garcia is. We see the social media aspect of it. We see the public aspect. Like Javante Davis, we know is a boxing superstar. That man can fight in any city in, in the U.S. and sell it out. That's what he's proved he can do. Now Ryan did a great gate and a great number with Javante Davis, but now we see what happens when he is the A side, when he is the the lead of this fight. But either way, I agree with you. You can't lose and look bad and behave in certain ways if you're not winning, you, you you have to win. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. And if you don't win, you better look damn good. You better have a Gotti Ward type of moment, Gotti Ward type of fight in order to keep the fans engaged in what you're doing. My dad always said, boxing only cares about what have you done for me lately. <laughs> if this gentleman, Ryan Garcia, goes out here and, and, and coughs up a goose egg, doesn't win a round, doesn't look good, slug, sloppy, anything of that nature, Boxing Brooklyn, everybody's gonna write him off. Not gonna want to see him anymore. This is this is this is. You're right. Like I don't agree with that either. But I didn't. I, didn't, I wasn't listening to you, so I. Ah, okay. There was no reason for me to say, "Hey, Oscar." I thought, I thought he was gonna I, jump in I and support I me and help. Uh, yeah, I was. We're a team. Sure, we're a team. <laughs> but no, I, you're right. You can't lose and just it be okay. You can't lose at the top of the level at the top, and and it's okay. It's not okay. Nobody. Respects that. Nobody appreciates it, especially when you've done, 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 dirt, 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 dirt. And and here you can't be clean here. Nobody wants to see more dirt. I remember Chris a couple of days ago said that this is also a big fight for, for Derek James, his new trainer. How much work and how, how difficult would this work have been with Derek James getting Ryan focused in camp during camp? I don't think it's You're shaking it, your head already. I don't, I don't, yeah, because it's not Derek James's job to control Ryan Garcia. You heard Oscar De La Hoya, his promoter, saying, I can't control Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia controls himself. So with that said, trainer's not going to be the issue here. It's all about discipline. It's all about where his mental is at, where his focus is at, where his hunger is at, where the game plan is at. I can go on and on and on. This is about Ryan Garcia, the man. Forget the fighter. The man, the character, the discipline. Then you add the skill and the style. We know he's fast. We know he can punch hard. We know he's a superstar. But can he beat the big dogs on the big stage? He's 0-1 so far with Tank. He got knocked out. A lot of people say he quit. Now he gets another opportunity to shine. Can he shine on the big stage and beat the big dogs? That's the question. I, I do think that it is a big moment, though, for Derek James, because you do have to have a game plan. Now, Devin Haney going into this fight, he always has great game plans. It's Bill Haney, it's Ben Davison, it's Lee Wiley, it's the brain trust that comes up with the kind of game plans that allow you to succeed against Vasily Lomachenko. But, but, but Ryan Garcia has had that. He was 5-0, five, oh, five knockouts with Eddie Reynoso. Why leave perfection? The game plan, the trainer is not going to uh, be... You can also argue, look, I'm not taking away from that relationship, but he faced better competition since leaving Eddie Reynoso. The best fight that Ryan faced up at that point was Luke Campbell, like Javante Davis on a different level than Luke I'm just saying, I think the trainer matters. I think the game plan Ryan comes out with matters. If, if Ryan comes out reckless, that is not going to be a formula for success against a disciplined fighter like Devin Haney. It goes both ways. If Ryan comes out 
It look, looks like something that nobody expected. He wins the fight. Yeah, you're going to contribute a lot of that. You're going to give credit to Derrick James. If it goes the opposite way, now here's the thing. Because we've seen so much in the public from Ryan, 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 we haven't seen anything from Derrick James. So to a degree, we really can't even – I understand what you're saying. We can't, we can't hold the responsibility of how – uh, Ryan Garcia performs on fight night. We really, to a degree, we can't hold Derrick James responsible nope. for it. I get what you're saying, but it goes both ways. If he loses, we we have to look at X's and O's. If he wins, that, we have to look at X's that is and O's. a heavy burden. Every trainer, great trainer, or yes. when you win, you're great. When you lose, it, it's it's your fault. No, it's the you got to start blaming the fighter as well. You got to hold him responsible. Derrick James is a great trainer. There's a lot of great trainers out there, but ultimately they're not the ones fighting. My dad would always say, "I did what I had to do. If you go out there and you don't do what we did in training, that's on you." Boom. And look, we were all ringside for his last fight against Oscar Duarte, and there's no way on earth that Derek James told him to do a shoulder roll finish up. Like Derek James isn't telling him to do that. So I wonder if he's even listening to the instructions. Derek can have the best game plan in the world. Is he listening to that? A reasonable question to ask because, look, I've had conversations with their team throughout the course of the week. And, look, Derek does not want to see that shoulder roll back. No way. <laughs> but there is a part of Ryan Garcia that believes he is good at it, that believes it is an asset to him. He said that it was not the first time against Oscar Duarte that he did that shoulder roll. It was the most noticeable time, that's for certain. So there's a part of Ryan Garcia that thinks that should be part of his game plan, but Derek James fundamentally does not want that to be shown. Yeah, I was going to say, he, it, Derek James might actually get off scot-free, you know, without any responsibility in terms of how this fight ends, should it end poorly, of course, for, 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 for Ryan Garcia. Because when you look back at the Duarte fight, something that he never showed Ryan Garcia, they never worked on together. You go back and you see history of him not listening. When, when it comes to this fight right here, you say, hey, the kid just, I couldn't get through that. I hope, you know, so. I hope we don't see that shoulder roll. But you know who does want to see that shoulder roll? Devin Haney. Haney. Devin Haney in the fighter man. He said, man, I hope he brings that bleep to the table. I'm going to expose him. Yeah, we are hearing, by the way, that Devin the Dream Haney is in the building as well. It's just Ryan Garcia now, so we're close. We're close. Half of the main event is here. Oh. Uh, and the half that is here, Devin Haney, I mean, we are talking an elite fighter now. He's now definitely in that threshold as one of the best fighters on planet Earth, Chris. Yeah, Devin Haney, top five on my pound-for-pound pound list. I think he has earned well, what, what's your five? that distinction. I think you go top Terrence Crawford, uh, Sean's best friend, Noe in a way. There you go. And you got <laughs> Alexander Usyk up there at number three, Canelo at number four, yeah. and Devin Haney, for me, is at number five. Banner year for Devin Haney. He was my fighter of the year in 2023, the win over Lomachenko. You can criticize it and say it should have gone the other way. Hey, that's what happens in close fights, right? Not every fight is 118-110. Some of them are close. I thought the body shots of Devin Haney did him enough to earn that victory. Then he closed it out by beating Regis Progre in a manner we have not seen Regis Progre ever defeated before. Let's not rub the shine off that. I thought Regis was the number one guy at 140 when he took that fight. And Devin Haney completely dominated from start to finish. This is a fighter that at 25 years old looks like he is just peaking and still has some room to grow. Better win for him. Regis Progre over City Lomachenko. Well, look, uh, like on, paper, people... on paper, it's Lomachenko. That's a Hall of Famer. I mean, that's high-tech Lomachenko, three-division yeah. champion. But to shut out a 140-pound puncher moving up in weight, that's impressive. So I got to say pro grade, the pro grade performance. I, was, I feel pro grade, too. You know, when you, again, like you just said, man, you just, you, 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 you but, lights out. No one predicted a shot out. I mean, I think a lot of people predicted he could win, but no one thought you win every single round and put pro grade down. Hey, the heavier handed fighter in that fight was Devin Haney, which is remarkable. He put Regis Progray down and had him hurt a couple more times over the course of that fight. So, you know, give Devin Haney credit for having a little bit more pop in those punches than people do. Is that something, Sean, that can be worked on, punch power? Some people say you're born punches. Some people say if I sit on their shots a bit more, maybe work on different things. Can you, can you become a puncher? Can I tell you, Wilder was a born puncher. Keith Thurman was a born puncher. Those guys were just blessed and gifted with, with power. There's ways to work on power. There's ways to build your your muscles, or build your 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 your, your muscle endurance and power. So take into account one thing that Ryan does really well: the way he throws the hook. Your delivery also determines how much power you have as well. Ryan Garcia is in the building, so both are here. Uh, Ryan Garcia did a bit of exercise there because I can tell you now, having done those steps, 
They're not easy to do. <laughs> They're not I think he needs to get any more exercise for the weigh-in. I think he's ready, locked in, ready to go. Yeah, he looks locked in as well, doesn't he, Sergio? Oh, I mean, he looks great. When doesn't he look great? This is Ryan Garcia. He's accustomed to the bright lights. He's accustomed to the fans. He's accustomed to fighting on the big stage. But can he win on the big stage? I mean, he looks ready. He looks fit and sharp. Eye of the tiger. Let's I gotta go. I got to say, that movement right there didn't look, didn't resemble anything that he's been saying. Yeah. You know what I mean, that, that, I know he's just shadow box. I know he's just moving around, but that looked good. You know what I mean? That looked sharp. Let, lets me know, you know, he's still got his faculties. Yeah, and whatever you think of box. the pure talent gap between Ryan Garcia and Devin, I think it's fair to say there is one. I think Devin is a, is the naturally more talented boxer. Ryan Garcia has that big equalizer. Look, the Oscar Duarte fight was kind of back and forth for the first seven, eight rounds. Then Ryan landed one shot that completely discombobulated Oscar Duarte, who is a tough guy. He can land that type of shot against Devin Haney. And that shot was a right hand. Everyone's accustomed to the left hook. It was a right hook that hurt Oscar Duarte. So you got to you gotta remind yourself, he's not... Ryan Garcia is more than just a left-handed one-trick pony. He rocked a tough guy and a hard power puncher and Duarte with a right hand. Boxing's full of these stories, though, isn't it, Sean? Where we all come on and, you know, we, we're all talking about the favorite to win and he's going to win and we're already setting up a fight for him. We've seen, we've seen bigger upsets than this. And 18 months ago, this would have been a very close fight between the two on everyone's mind. Now, all of a sudden, a lot of us are going Devin Haney. Ryan's got all the skills to get the job done on Saturday, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, look, well, let's go back just a little bit. If, if he doesn't get stopped by Tank Davis, then, yeah, this is probably a 50-50 fight. Yeah. He does, if he doesn't have the Tank Davis fight and he has the Duarte fight, this is 100% a 50-50 fight, even if he's doing the posting and things of that yeah. nature that he's been doing. You, you, he has some stains that you can go off of. I think it took us, well, took the world seeing him in the ring with Tank Davis to see that talent gap that, that Chris was just speaking on. There's a, there's a talent gap here as well. I think that um, there's a difference between uh, what your gifts are and your talents are. I think that they're, gift, they're both gifted speed. They're both gifted quick, quickness and things of that nature. Bro. Sean, I, Sean I, yes, I agree with there's an uh, even talent gap, but I think the discipline gap, the strategy gap is going to outweigh uh, Ryan Garcia here because we've seen him not follow a game plan. You mentioned the tank fight. He started too aggressively, and he paid for it. And he paid for it with Luke Campbell as well. So he says he wants to meet Devin Haney in the middle of the ring. That's great for him. But is Devin Haney going to fall for that? I don't think so. Yeah, you see, he paid for it against Luke Campbell. But Luke Campbell ultimately paid for that by getting knocked out with a body shot. And look, Dottie, to bring it back to what you said at the beginning, if this fight was made in the spring of 2021, when Ryan was coming off that win over Luke Campbell and Devin was a 135-pound champion, we would be talking about this as a 50-50 fight at worst. Some people might have gone into it favoring Ryan Garcia the way he won that fight against Luke Campbell with the body shot. So we are not that far removed from these two being peers on that level. Yeah, we can see Ryan Garcia just behind my shoulder with his team, Derek James there as well. Um, they're ready to go. They're ready to get on the stage. He wants to hit those girls here. You can see him having words with Errol Hawani. But he, he's pointing to his head there, almost kind of, I'm focused. I'm focused. I mean, look, we're going to hear from him on the stage as well. We'll make our own mind up on that. This week, we feel like we haven't seen him focused. But I almost feel like the best place for him, like some fighters, Billy Joe Sauna, the Tyson Furies of the world, is to be in the ring. Yep. A lot of these guys need that focus, and their focus sometimes come in the squared circle. And I is the case for Ryan Garcia, Chris. Yeah, I do too, because this is a very important fight for Ryan Garcia. As we were talking about, there's only so many times that you can lose and look bad losing before the public loses interest, before you start to lose some of your boxing fan base. So yes, this is a fight for Ryan Garcia against Devin Haney, 140-pound title on the line, but for Ryan Garcia, a lot more at stake. He needs to win, or at the very least, look good in a loss. I will say this, Sergio, and this is to give Ryan Garcia some credit here. This could have been Roly Romero. It could potentially have been Isak Cruz. He's gone for the harder one here. Yes, more money, obviously. I was about to say yeah, He's gone more, but still, he's, he's gone Devin Haney. Look, Ryan Garcia could have fought a lot easier names and done good numbers in L.A. all over the world, right? He's gone to Devin Haney. That has to be given some credit to yeah, I mean, you got to give the kid credit. I mean, he goes from Tank to Duarte, who was on a knockout streak, now to a, a champion, undefeated sniper in Devin Haney. Yes, we give Ryan Garcia credit. But you also give, got to give credit to his opponents as well. The opponents, are they want the big the big names. They want the big dogs. And they're the ones that actually are, are, are calling for him. So, yeah, give credit to Ryan Garcia. But can he pass the test in the end? That's what we want to see.
I have absolutely no idea what's going on in terms of <laughs> waiting for these guys to hit the scales. I, I really don't, honestly. I must see Clarissa Shields is on the stage as well. I mean, these fighters are ready to weigh in. The fans have been waiting for hours to see these fighters weigh in, as we have as well. I can confirm again, like I said, Devin Haney is here. Ryan Garcia is here as well. Oscar's on stage, but the, the, everyone's here. I don't know what the hold-up is, but look, we only have to wait a few more moments. You can see the QR code there on the screen. Make sure you scan it to be a part of not just Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, but some fantastic undercard as well. Guys that have to prove they're ready to go to the next stage, and guys like Melikuziev and Scrappy versus Jimenez. Guys that want that world title crack. There's a lot going on on Saturday night right here at the Barclays Center. Make sure you're a part of it. Scan the QR code on Saturday. Sean's part of the team, I'm part of the team, Chris, Todd, Carissa Shields, fantastic lineup as well, and obviously the magnificent Kate Abdo. Gentlemen, you know my rules. We'll have no f around and absolutely no funny business. We're going to wait our turn and maintain our manners at all times, or this game's over before it's even begun. Frank, let's have you do the honours. Age before beauty, Eddie. Let's get some fights made. I haven't got all night. Chop, chop, Frankie. Off you go. Chop, chop, indeed. That's a cleaver for you. And there's a killer behind it. He's enjoying his first Friday as a butcher. When two guys come in to collect, as they always do, where's our money they demand from his boss? And that butcher here doesn't take too kindly to the noise. He calmly asks, can I help you? Before they can respond, crash. Bang. And a walk. They wake up on the pavement the next morning. Nice sausages, though. A, a little snippet there of the best fight car promo ever. Five versus five. You can go and watch it on YouTube right now. Incredible. That was Nick Ball there. That there is Bill Haney. His son must be right behind him, Devin Haney. The whole team are here. Devin's making the walk. Uh, he, he, he looks like the weight might have caused a bit of an issue for him as well. His eyes look pretty sunken, but we know Devin's a professional, always makes the weight, Chris. Yeah, Devin Haney at weigh-ins always looks in rough shape, but he makes the weight, then rehydrates an awful lot. His last fight against Regis Progray pushed 160 pounds, a 20-pound rehydration for that fight that was scheduled for 140 pounds. But Devin has had resounding success with that strategy over the years. A banner 2022, and this is his first chance to kick it off in 2023. Is this a bit of psychological warfare here from Devin Haney making Ryan Garcia wait? Seems like so, but look, we're ready. Uh, Joe Martinez is ready. The whole team are on stage. Let's throw it to Joe Martinez to make this official. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the wait is finally over. The main event is in the house tonight. And we are pleased to welcome you to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York. Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions brings you tomorrow night's main event, the WBC Super Lightweight World Championship. It is presented by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions, Haney Promotions, King Rye Promotions, and Matchroom Boxing. And on the stage with me right now, if you would be so gracious, please welcome Hall of Famer Bernard Hopkins. To my right, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. And 13-time world champion, another Olympic gold medalist, Clarissa Shields. This fight tomorrow night brought to you by Wild Casino, America's most trusted online casino. Get wild. Only fans, where creators earn. And Everlast, the choice of champions, the preeminent leader in boxing since 1910. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet tomorrow night's World title challenger and champion. First up from Victorville, California, 24 and 1. 20 knockouts to his credit. The former WBC interim lightweight world champion. Please welcome King Rai, Ryan Garcia. And his opponent.
opponent. Well, Ryan wants to weigh in right now. One hundred forty three point two one forty three point two official weight for Ryan Garcia. And his opponent tomorrow night standing undefeated in 31 professional fights, 15 knockouts, the former unified lightweight world champion, the current reigning, defending, undefeated WBC super lightweight champion of the world, the dream, Devin Haney! You heard it there, uh, Ryan Garcia, overweight, 143.2 pounds. I don't know if that was a swig of some sort of um, alcoholic beverage there, but um, yeah, and I don't know who's on the stage with him, but um, there's obviously his entourage there, and it's almost a celebration that he, he's made the 143 pound limit there, Sergio. Um, I, 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 I don't know what to think of this. I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, was that a beer that he drank on on the scale? No. I, you know, I, think, I think he's playing games, and I think it was a beer bottle, but I don't believe that was that far in sight. What this does mean as well is obviously Ryan Garcia, if he were to win, obviously can't win. Uh, the WBC Super uh, Lightweight title, Chris. Yeah, Ryan Garcia coming in over the weight, takes the world title fight off the table for him. Devin Haney, of course, still the champion, is defending his title in this fight. What this does mean is that a significant amount of money changes hands between Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. Yeah, I was just about to say I wouldn't face off these guys. This is uh, exactly what was bound to happen. So. Yeah, that, I don't know if that was Bill Haney there with, with Bernard or someone from Ryan's team, but clearly a lot of animosity between the teams. Right now, as we get our final stare down of these two champions, will meet in the ring tomorrow evening. Yeah, there's going to be no face-off here, I don't believe, which is a shame. Again, look, fans are here I think at the Devin's Barclays Center. Devin's coming forward. He wants to do the face-off, which is good. The two fighters before you have met before in the amateur divisions. They are three wins each. This is the most intense face-off I've ever seen. Tonight, it goes down to Barclays Center for the New York USA. It's live on the WWE tonight. Bill and Bernard still going at it. Look, they, they've got their history, Bill and Bernard, but look, one thing we do have is a fight on Saturday night. I think Ariel Hawani is going to try and get a word with Ryan. Yet Ryan does stay. Ariel's going to get a word with Ryan and Devon. Be very interested to hear what Ariel has to say and what Ryan has to say as well about missing the weight. All right, I'm here with Ryan Garcia. Ryan, intense stuff up there. We'll get to each other. I just said, be in the fucking center of the ring like you. I, I gave you your money. You better give me my fucking money. You want that center of the ring? Let's fucking do it. Okay, let me ask you, Ryan, what happened this morning? Hey, enough of that funny business. We got a fight tomorrow, man. Fuck. Ryan, why did, why did you miss weight? What happened this morning? Could you tell the people this has been a big story today? Man, I, I did my best, you know, to make this weight. Uh, I put myself through hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Suck my dick. At the end of the day, I'm the best fighter here. I ain't ever gonna be playing, and I'm gonna knock him out, and everybody's gonna be cheering. What? How much did you have to give him? Uh, I had to give him 1.5 million, but that's light work for me. Come on now. And what were you drinking up there? I was drinking a nice ass beer. That shit was fire. What do you say to all the people who didn't think you would make it to this point, who doubted whether or not you'd be able to make this fight? God did. Let's go. Thank you very much. Anyway, stream highly blessed, highly favored. Let's get. Thank you, Ryan. Good luck to you. Now let me have a word with the champion, the WBC super lightweight champion, the great Devin Haney, the undefeated Devin Haney. Devin, that was some intense stuff up there with your father. What were you saying to Ryan and what was he saying to you? Alhamdulillah, this is all a dream come true. I've dreamed of these, of these moments and the moment is finally here. Now it's time for me to shine. Okay, obviously yesterday you had that bet, so it seemed as though you had some 
doubts as to whether or not he would make weight. What is your reaction to him missing by over three pounds? Um, he's, he's very unprofessional. I'm a true professional. And uh, I, to I told him yesterday his antics will betray him. And uh, this is just a start. Tomorrow, the world will see that I'm levels above this average fighter. And at any point, did you consider not taking the fight considering he missed weight by over three? Of course not. It don't matter what weight he, can, what, what, what weight he came in. I'm a true champion, and I will show it. All right, well, good luck to you. Do you have a final prediction? Considering everything that has happened, how do you see this goes going down tomorrow? I'll end this pussy. Get him out of boxing. It's over. All right, thank you, Devin. Good luck to you and the rest of the team. Eddie, if we can have a quick word. I know you've talked a lot today, but one final word based on what just happened up there. You were pretty close. What was your POV? The wildness continues. Get ready for a wild night tomorrow at the Barclay Center live on The Zone. This, this is going to be an interesting fight. Both guys are pumped. The teams are pumped. I've never seen a build-up like this before. Expect the unexpected tomorrow night. Expect drama and expect a masterclass from Devin Haney. Looking forward to it. Good luck to you and the team. There he is, Eddie Hearn of Matchroom, and we'll finish things off with Oscar De La Hoya, the face of Golden Boy Promotions. Oscar, pretty hectic stuff. Are you okay? You seem a little all good, fired up. All good, all good, all good. Hey, Ryan's ready, baby. Ryan is ready. It's going to be a fight. Let's go. Let's go, New York. Your reaction to him missing weight? It's all good. It's all good. Okay. We're all good. We have a fight tomorrow, and that's what people want to see, a fight. It's right over there. Anything you want to say to Ryan? Take care of business. Go take care of business, baby. Tomorrow, it's our night. It's your night, baby, tomorrow. Let's go. It's our Let's night. It's Make our night. Yeah, man, this is, this Make a statement. This is for all the children in the world. Praise Jesus Christ. Make a statement. Make right. it Take him out. Take Thank him you, guys. Take him out. Take him out. Back to you. Chris, uh, obviously the big talking point from that way in um, everyone else has been perfect up until this point. The big talking point, the main man, the story all week has been about Ryan Garcia and he misses weight by over three pounds. I guess the only positive I can think of is that Devin Haney isn't a small 140 pounder and he will rehydrate to 160 pounds plus, but this isn't good Ryan missing weight by that much in a championship fight. No, it's certainly bitterly disappointing to see him miss weight by this much because one of the storylines coming into this fight was Ryan Garcia fighting for his first world title. He's accomplished a lot up until this point in terms of selling tickets, selling pay-per-views, but he has not yet won a world title, which is incredibly important on the resume of professional fighters but clearly Ryan made a decision at some point over the last few days to not kill himself to get down to 140 what's something that Ryan's talked about a lot over the last few months how much he feels he had to handicap himself to get down to 136 to fight Gervonta Davis for whatever reasons he decided not to do it for this one come in overweight and take the fight in a healthier way perhaps than he would have otherwise I like it Chris Mannix ever the Mr. Positive on this one um i guess look we have a fight and that's the main thing it's been an interesting fight build up both fighters have made weight one has made weight and that is devin haney who will look to retain his wbc super lightweight title you see the qr code on the screen make sure you scan it because as oscar said one thing we do have is a fight on saturday night and we'll see you all tomorrow from the barclay center for something i think something that's going to surprise a few we got a great fight for the Amazon, no doubt. We need a fight. Hey, we're good fighters. Let's fight. Live on the Zone Worldwide, April 20th, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. These two have been going back and forth since the amateur days. Two generational talents, the world at their feet. Let's make the fight happen now. This one is going to be a grudge match. Set to a Devin the Dream Haney. Living the dream, multiple world champion, undefeated. I am the man. It's time for me to show the world how great I really am. Ryan Garcia, lightning fast, explosive, unmissable, going all in. This is the year I shot the world. A world championship is on the line, but only one can wear the crown. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation. I'm telling you, it's special. This one. Alice. Live on the Zone Worldwide, April 20th. You want a real fight? You can find me.